Today in Pittsburgh, the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers visit Heinz Field on a mission. A mission to play their season for Eric Legrand, their teammate who was seriously injured a week ago at the Meadowlands. Led by their head coach, Greg Schiano, they've dedicated themselves to play the game the way Legrand has always played, with supreme effort and devotion. Today, their motivation is high. Now it's time for these Knights to show they believe. Welcome to the Big East Network Game of the Week presented by PNC. This afternoon we're in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Inside an emotionally charged Heinz Field as the Pitt Panthers play host to the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Both teams hoping to get to 2-0 in Big East play, but Rutgers players say they have a lot more to play for here today. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Gleason and welcome to the Big East Network Game of the Week. A challenging week, uh, to say the least, for the Rutgers uh, football team. Last week, after coming from behind to beat Army in overtime, there certainly was no celebration. In fact, they left the Meadowlands with heavy hearts after watching one of their teammates, Eric Legrand, being carted from the field and taken to the hospital after suffering a serious spinal injury. Rutgers had tied the game late in the fourth quarter. Legrand, who was on the kickoff coverage team, went down and made the tackle, but then was left lying on the field, suffering from paralysis with no movement from the neck down. The 20 was then taken to Hackensack University Medical Center where they performed emergency surgery throughout the night to stabilize the spine. Legrand remains at the medical center surrounded by family, but knowing that his Rutgers teammates and the entire college football community, for that matter, have him in their thoughts and prayers. Initially, Rutgers players said it would be extremely difficult to focus and play this game here in Pittsburgh today. By Tuesday, that focus had returned, knowing they had to play it for their teammate, Eric Legrand, hoping to play well, hoping to pick up the victory in his honor. For more on this story, let's go down to the field now and check in with Eamon McEnany. Thanks, Mike. Every night this week, Coach Greg Schiano would make the 45-minute trip from campus to Hackensack to spend some time with Eric Legrand. And earlier today, I caught up with the coach to find out more on Eric's condition and his team's mindset. Coach, when was the last time you were able to spend some time with Eric, and how is he doing? I was with him uh, yesterday, and uh, or Thursday night, actually. And, and you know, he's, he's doing as well as, as you can expect in this situation. But Eric's a fighter, and uh, he's got a great family and great support, so... Eric's gonna. Eric's gonna is going to make it out of there. Several of your players have been able to make the trip to Hackensack to spend some time with Eric. What message has he been able to, commute to communicate to his teammates? Well, you know, just the way Eric approaches life. I think he just wants to keep affirming that to our players. You know, his our big thing is the chop, and Eric lived that. I mean, it, whatever's next is what Eric was 100% engaged in, and he wants his teammates to do that in their preparation leading up to today's game and then through the game. How would you describe the emotional steps taken by your players from last Saturday to now as they get ready to return to the field? Well, it's been quite a quite a path, you know. Um, I've never been through something like this, and neither of our players, but uh, what we've tried to do is stay focused on the things we can control, and uh, really our prayers are the most important thing for Eric, and that's what I've told our team. Coach, today there's going to be a banner signed by Pittsburgh students in support of Eric across the state of New Jersey this weekend. High school players wearing the number 52 sticker on their helmet. What has this support meant for Eric, his family, and you and your program? Well, I think it means it means a lot. I know it does to Eric and his family, and you know it's unfortunate that it takes something like this to galvanize a group of people. But, uh, you know, I can't tell you the amount of support we've had from our our league brethren here in the Big East and across the country. It uh, it affirms to me what what athletics is about. Coach, thanks for the time. Good luck today against Pittsburgh. Thank you. Back in Piscataway, they are selling two number 52 t-shirts in honor of Eric Legrand. Many of the Scarlet Knight fans here on hand today are wearing those t-shirts. So, Mike, several reminders here in Pittsburgh of what the Scarlet Knights are playing for. Thank you, Eamon. And now we welcome in John Congemi, the former Pittsburgh quarterback. John, you were a four-year starter in college. You understand the camaraderie of a locker room. With such a challenging week, how do you expect Rutgers to perform? I think they'll perform quite well, and I think it starts with leadership and direction, and they get that from their head coach and Greg Schiano, and also the message from head coach to team and message from Eric to his teammates. And I think that the Rutgers Scarlet Knights will come out today and play with the pride and play with the passion and the determination that Eric plays with. And if they do that, 
they'll be able to be successful today. Both teams come in riding two game winning streaks and as I mentioned earlier the winner goes to two and oh in the Big East play last week we were in Syracuse. We saw this Pittsburgh team there were a lot of question marks surrounding the entire team especially at quarterback Tino Sinceri answered some of those questions last week. We well, played quite well and he led this team because he protects the football he had career highs with four touchdowns and 266 yards but the big play was back Mike in the pit offense and that'll be key today. The first play last week against Syracuse a 79 yard touchdown can they continue to make the big play and can they continue to run the football that will be a huge key for the Panthers as well. Deion Lewis showed signs that he had that spark from the 09 season last week against Syracuse 78 yards on 14 carries. Now Ray Graham will play and play early in this game but Deion Lewis can he get on track today that'll be key for the Panthers and John on the other side of the field Greg Schiano a year ago had a freshman quarterback by the name of Tom Savage. He was a freshman All-American at season's end. Here we are a year later he has another true freshman to chase Dodd and he's really grabbed the bull by the horns and this is a guy only making his third start that's not afraid to throw the football downfield. He pushes the envelope on offense. He's a great leader, a very tough quarterback, and he's not afraid to fit it into tight windows. So this is a guy that leads by his play, and he plays at a high level. But he'll have to have his playmaker on the outside, Mohamed Sanu. He was in a boot on his foot the entire week. He'll be a game-time decision. He's key for Rutgers because he leads not only in receiving yards, but rushing yards. And Rutgers relies on that Wildcat formation. If he's not in there to pull the trigger, it may be tough sledding on the ground today. A victory for the Scarlet Knights. They go to 5-2 in 2010, but more importantly, they want to play well. They want to get that victory for their teammate, Eric Legrand. We're just going to have to try our best just to, uh, you know, play, like, play the game like Eric would play. You no, know, if we all played like he did and came with the passion and practice like he did every single day, we'd be a lot better football team. Just the energy that he brings. And um, you know, the enthusiasm, he, he lifts up the spirit of the football team. And we just all, all just want to honor him and just play hard as he did. Yeah, sometimes I worry. Sometimes I worry. What if something bad happens? So what happens if someone gets my credit or debit card and buys a ton of stuff? That would be really, really bad. With Bank of America's zero liability guarantee, you're not responsible for any fraudulent charges on your card. Guarantee. Bank of America says they'll credit any fraudulent charges back to my account as soon as the next day. The next day. That makes me feel better about using these cards. They got my back. They got my back. The opportunity to worry less about fraud with the zero liability guarantee from Bank of America. Uh, Doc, I just got your email. I'm out for the season. <laughs> Don't worry about that. I switched to Sprint's $69.99 plan, so I get unlimited emails. What, what does that mean? It means I'm dropping you for my fantasy team, that's for sure. What does that mean about my knee? Oh, your knee's totally shattered. Did you see how hard that guy hit you? I, I don't want to see... Hey, 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 hey. Relax. <laughs> Not costing me any extra. Only Sprint gives you unlimited text, web, and calling to any mobile for just $69.99. Sprint, the now network. Today's Big East Network game is brought to you by PNC for the achiever and us all. Champion, it's how you play. Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Liberty Mutual Insurance, responsibility, what's your policy? Trade Winds Resort on St. Pete Beach, Florida. Go long, our beach is open. The Principal Financial Group, it's time to rebuild your financial future with the Principal Financial Group. Vonage, sounds good. And by the fourth annual Direct TV SEC Big East Invitational, December 8th and 11th, in both Louisville and Pittsburgh. Back inside Heinz Field as we take a look there at the Hall of Fame room over at the uh, Pitt facilities. Rutgers and Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh uh, finally snapping a four-game skid against the Scarlet Knights in Piscataway last year. But the last two times here in Heinz Field, Greg Schiano's come away with the victory. Now, John Rutgers has won the toss. They deferred. So Pittsburgh will have the football first. But right now, we head down to the field to check in with Eamon. Well, Mike, as John mentioned, uh, Mohamed Sanu night might not be 100%. If he can't run the Wildcat, the freshman Jeremy Deering out of Florida will run that for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights because he played quarterback in high school but on the positive side for Rutgers Joe Martinex looked the best he has all season long in practice this week he's been hobbled by an ankle injury only 27 carries in the last four games but he should be good to go for the Scarlet Knights. All right, thanks a lot, Eamon. And uh, John, as we mentioned, uh, Rutgers uh, wins the toss. Uh, they're going to go on defense first as we take a look at Mohamed Sanu. 
Mr. Everything. It's going to be interesting watching him because Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator for Pittsburgh, he was on the cutting edge of that Wildcat with Michael Bishop over at Kansas State. Yeah, and it's really key for the safeties to be able to be make big plays against the Wildcat. And for Rutgers, if they can get Sanu on the field offensively, it's a huge plus for them. San Santi with the kickoff for the Scarlet Knights. And this is Graham from his own end zone. Graham finds a crease over the 35, up to the 40-yard line, and the Pitt Panthers have great field position to open this game after a 40-yard return by number one, Ray Graham. Ray Graham has been a big story for the Pitt Panthers on offense, on special teams, returning kicks. He's uh, just a terrific, electrifying guy on the return and in the backfield as well. But Tino Sinceri will be the guy that starts at quarterback for the Panthers. He's a guy that has to make it happen offensively, and he's making progress you'd like to see in a young quarterback, especially protecting the football. And the Panthers start from the eye, but now Graham goes in motion, and Sinceri drops back into the shotgun. Four touchdowns. Last week up at the Dome. Sinceri comes up firing, finds his man, Shanahan, down to the 40 of Rutgers. And he opened up that Notre Dame game, 8 for 8. Now he's 1 for 1 with a big game. Well, you like to see the, the progression that Tino's making. He's taking practice from the field and the way he's playing at practice, which is at a high level, and moving it to Saturday afternoons. And you can see that in his numbers. A high percentage, nice touchdown interception ratio. He's making all the plays you need to make to win football games at this position. First play from scrimmage goes 22. Shanahan last week had four catches for 64 yards and his first touchdown. Keep it on the ground. This time it's Deion Lewis. Lewis with the spin inside the 20. Drop just shy of the 15. He dropped the football. There is a scramble for it. No indication as of yet. It looks like it might be Pittsburgh football. Well, Harness, the middle linebacker, finally making the stop. So both plays going 22, John. Well, Mike, we talked about that spark that Deion Lewis may have found in the Carrier Dome last week. Well, right here, breaks the arm tackle right there of Joe Lafege and was headed into the end zone. A nice tackle, a game-saving or a touchdown-saving tackle around the 16-yard line. But Lewis, on his first carry, shows you a glimpse of last season. Graham in the backfield now as the Panthers move into the red zone. A major concern a week ago. They went from 42% scoring touchdowns up to 48% after scoring 45 pounds, 45 points with the dome. The penalty flight Offense, number 12. Five yard, Five yard penalty. First down. That's Jerry McGinn. He's our referee from our Big East officiating crew here this afternoon. And Sinceri and company averaging about 63 yards in penalties. Dave Wanstead uh, watching this team average about eight and a half penalties per game. And they've been pretty good in the red zone this year, just over 80% on the year. Sinceri feels some pressure, dumps it off, and this one is picked off. Unbelievable play defensively, all the way back to the midfield stripe. That's Charlie Noonan. The INT goes 24 the other way, and it's Rutgers football. Great play by Charlie Noonan, and they rerouted the screen pass. It was a screen pass to the short side of the field, but Ray Graham never got over to the right side. He actually gets rerouted back away from his offensive lineman, the tip pass, and it goes right into the hands of Charlie Noonan. Graham is supposed to go back here behind his lineman on the screen play, but Rutgers had it sniffed out in a tip pass right to Charlie Noonan. The stiff arm takes the Rutgers offense on the pit side of the 50-yard line. And the young freshman, Chase Dodd. Sanu is split to the bottom of your screen now, but Dodd will work from the shotgun. Dodd over the middle. Sanu. And dropped just shy of the 40-yard line. His first pass is complete. So Chase Dodd, uh, I don't know why, but he probably reminds me of John Congemi when he played quarterback. <laughs> well, he, the one thing that Chase Dodd does is make everybody around him better. Terrific numbers through two starts on the season, and he's not afraid to throw the football down the field. He's a tough quarterback, not, doesn't have great size, but he possesses a very strong arm. Second and two after picking up. Eight on the first play from scrimmage. And there's some hard running down to the 35-yard uh, line. Joe Martinick gained a five on the play. 
as we take a look at the offensive lineup now for Rutgers uh, Mark Harrison the big sophomore coming into his own now averaging 18 yards a catch Mohamed Sanu he is their leading receiver up front to Stapleton a win uh, Barbieri Lowry and Forrest Barbieri he's a tri captain and the only senior up front first and ten for the Scarlet Knights Dodd hands off again and again it's Martin uh, just shy of the 30 yard line gain of four on the play as we take a look at that defensive lineup before the Pitt Panthers 14 sacks all 14 from the big guys up front Sheard and Lindsay each with five Alexi has four the linebackers uh, Roberts uh, Bruder and Williams Roberts coming off his best game up at Syracuse and Reed and Gary at the corners Holly DeSico at the safeties Holly with four INTs he's tied for first in the Big East Dodd swings it out in the flat Boy, great ball control great handled out of the uh, 25 yard line that's uh, Jordan Thomas the true freshman from Endicott New York wonderful catch on the outside for Jordan Thomas he came into the game with nine receptions on the year make it 10 now but great concentration that's not a easy pass to catch going away from your quarterback just with the the uh, swing pass to the wide side Pitt had it sniffed out but uh, just a, a tip drill to himself and Thomas makes a big play. Coaching staff at Pittsburgh says this young God kid out of Burns High School in South Carolina can make all the big plays. This time they're working uh, out of the shotgun. They keep it on the ground. But the shotgun that time was Jeremy Deering, the true freshman from Tampa. So Sanu obviously is going to split time with Deering today. And that was a nice play by the Wildcat. Rutgers is going to have to run the football to be effective. And as Eamon said earlier, Joe Martinick had his best week of practice. And Jordan Thomas right now in the open field showing you he has a burst of speed as well. So DeSico makes the play for the Panthers. And the Panthers, the safeties versus the Wildcat have to come up. They're the last line of defense and make plays and make tackles in the open field. Thomas has picked up 15 on the play so God will work from the shotgun this time Cordell Young is in the backfield with seven touchdowns in the red zone this year this is Young bouncing off a would be tacklers finally hits the wall and still moves the pile inside the five yard line as we take a look at the Verizon uh, red zone numbers now for the Scarlet Knights. Well, 72.7% on the season. As you mentioned, seven touchdowns with nine field goals. That's last in the Big East Conference. So they have to do a better job of taking advantage of situations. Now, the defense has set the table for Greg Schiano. Now, the offense has to go in. They're putting a nice drive together, but they want to finish with touchdowns, not field goal opportunities. Greg Schiano in his 10th year now after turning down offers from Miami and Michigan to stay at Rutgers. That's D.C. Jefferson, the big 6'6", 260-pound tight end down on the field. The former quarterback, uh, they're taking a look at him. And so, you know, we're mentioning the fact, John, that uh, Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator at Pittsburgh, no stranger to the Wildcat. They ran it at Kansas State, and they feel like they were on the cutting end. So, so they're so familiar with it. They said they beat Nebraska twice because of it. How do you defend it? Well, you defend it by being aggressive anytime you can make a defense think you can take away their aggressiveness and that's what Phil Bennett believes in so you have to attack it on the edge and be strong up front they've won stead one and four all time against Rutgers as we take a look at the big defensive play by the Scarlet Knights Charlie Noonan with the INT Rutgers knocking on the door when we come back I think everybody's interested in saving money. It's just making yourself do it. Sometimes we're just complacent. Because we're afraid of change. The fact that Vonage does not require an annual contract, I'm definitely going to make the switch. No contracts with Vonage sounds like how business should be done. What more can you ask for? For just $14.99, get unlimited domestic and international calling, now without an annual contract. Now I can talk uh, however long I want. My mom wants me to call her every day. The sound is terrific. It's like they're next door. I switched to Vonage, and I'm never looking back. Polaris is having a factory authorized clearance, which means you can get financing as low as 3.99% and up to $1,200 in rebates on vehicles like the Ranger Razor or the Sportsman XP or the Ranger XP. That's financing as low as 3.99% and up to $1,200 in rebates. Hey, it's all about the deal. That's all you need to know, right? All deal, no hype. The Polaris factory authorized clearance going on now. 
Some people think Allstate only protects your car. Here's the truth. Allstate can also protect your home or apartment, as well as your boat, motorcycle, RV, and snowmobile, and even your retirement and your life. Not many insurance companies can say that, but Allstate can. Now that you know the truth, know this. The more of your world you put in good hands, the more you can save. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you like Allstate. I know belts and hoses, not X and hoses. I do owe two sensors, but not defenses. Yeah, I make a right call to keep your car in the game. Don't even need a playbook, it's all in my brain. Fuel injectors, alternators, radiators too. It's who I am, it's what I do. Never know how. Big Time College Football returns for the 19th year of the Las Vegas Bowl on Wednesday, December 22nd. Top teams from the Mountain West Conference and the Pac-10 will square off at Sam Boyd Stadium in this annual football tradition that has sold out five consecutive years. Get your tickets now. Visit makeabowlv.com or call 702-732-3912. Make it your game. It's the Mako Bowl Las Vegas. The following Big East Network game is brought to you in stunning high definition as we take a look at the skyline of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, just across the river here from Heinz Field. 10.37 to go on the first. Rutgers knocking on the door. We head down and check in with Amy. Obviously, the Scarlet Knights playing in honor of Eric LeGrand. Unfortunately for Greg Schiano, he had to deal with a similar situation back in 2004 when three players were seriously injured in a car accident. He said what he learned then is to make sure the players focus on what is and not the what ifs. And several players on that team, Mike, this week were quoted as saying the players have to throw the self pity out the window as soon as they get on the football field. Well, Layman, right now, this is their seventh play, started at the 49 yard line. After the INT by Charlie Noonan, this is Deering, the true freshman, out of the shotgun and running that Wildcat. He gets down close to the goal line. I know they miss Mohamed Sanu in this lineup and in this Wildcat formation, but Jeremy Deering, the freshman out of Tampa, doing an excellent job of being patient in the Wildcat and just picking and choosing where he wants to go with the football. Watch the patience. He wants to go left, and then he follows his fullback. Colin McRoy to the right side and gets down inside the one yard line. Finally dropped down by uh, Jared Hawley, the safety. Phil Bennett said Sanu is a great player, but uh, they can run this thing with Deering as well. He was a 1,000 yard rusher in high school. Here's the pitch. Trying to turn that corner. Looking for the pylon. There's the call. It's a touchdown for Rutgers. Joe Martnick. He was running hard, running for Eric LeGrand as he picks up his third touchdown. Well, Mike, it looked like the Panthers were going to string out Joe Martinick, who's not completely 100%. He's trying to get to that pylon. I'm not so sure if he was out of bounds before the football touches the pylon. We're going to take another look at this. Take a look at the feet of Martinick and see if he gets out of bounds before he hits the pylon oh, right yeah. there. Oh, yeah. Good I call. think that's going to get maybe called back inside the one yard line because as Martinick was stretching the football to get around Antoine Reed, it looked like his foot was out of bounds. Terrific effort by Joe Martinick, but I think they're going to take another look at this. Good call, John. They're going upstairs. Nick Trainer is our replay official. Uh, up in the broadcast booth, uh, he'll take a look at it, and I would be shocked if uh, he didn't uh, come up with the same conclusion. <laughs> well, I've been shocked so far this <laughs> season, but uh, we're going to take another look and see if Martinick was able to stretch the football out before his foot or feet get out of bounds. The right foot right there is out of bounds and hits before Joe stretches that football to touch or break the plane of that pylon in the goal line. That's good pursuit by Antoine Reed as well as Greg Williams to make Martinick go laterally and as he turns up you can see the ball is just inside the one yard line as his uh, right foot hits the out of bounds. Well Pittsburgh took the kickoff Ray Graham went 40 yards and the Panthers were moving the ball. Charlie Noonan intercepted and now Rutgers just inches away from the go ahead touchdown here at Heinz Field. We wait the call from Jerry McGinn. 
And Mike, it's one of these situations where Rutgers really would like to score early in this football and to game. And further review, further review. The, the, uh, the call on the field stands. Touchdown. It's a touchdown. And well, you were right. I spoke uh, too <laughs> prematurely there. I'm surprised again because it did look like the foot uh, definitely was out of bounds before Martinick hits the uh, pylon, but that's a, a terrific effort and a nice start by Rutgers, taking advantage of that interception and moving it down 49 yards for the touchdown. I said good call, John. I say bad call, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Mike. San San Tion for the extra point. You think Charlie Noonan, as he intercepted that ball and rumbled downfield, had Eric Legrand in the back of his mind? Absolutely. I think everybody in a red helmet today has Eric on his mind because that was terrific. The way he switched the football like a running back, stiff arms Tino Sincerian gets uh, Rutgers offense in instant field position. So Joe Martinick gets credit for his third rushing touchdown as we take another look at it now. And well, the reason why I disagreed with this initially, Mike, is that right foot looks like it hits right there yeah. out of bounds. And that, I don't believe the ball is close to the It's just got to get to the line. It's just the white. Right. But you're right. I mean, I don't think so either. Uh, and, you know, sometimes the camera angle's not right down the goal line. So unless, uh, you know, it's it just shows you a better camera angle, the, all, the officials are always going to side with what's called on the field. Well, of course, they were looking for indisputable video evidence, and uh, Martinick gets the touchdown, and Rutgers uh, playing for their teammate, Eric Legrand. Big defensive play by Charlie Noonan, and uh, Chase Dodd leads his Scarlet Knights down the field. And for the first time, probably in his collegiate career, they actually lead in the first quarter because they've been the cardiac kids so far this you year. You make a great point in the uh, fourth quarter comebacks that Rutgers has had this year. Three or four of those games were won in the fourth quarter against FIU, against UConn, and against Army. They've been in a position where they've had to come back late in games. So this is perfect for Greg Schiano to get the early lead 7-0 on the road. San San T with a second kickoff already here this afternoon. This one sailing towards... Cameron Sadler at the nine yard line. Sadler over the 25 30 and he's tripped up at the 31 yard line. A return of 23. Let's take a look down at the Big East standings are brought to you by Tradewinds Resort on St. Pete Beach. Go long. Our beach is open. Well the Big East Conference right now West Virginia 1 and 0 in conference with Rutgers the Panthers right there at 1 and 0 but overall 5 and 1. So this is a very important game for Rutgers and Pittsburgh to get some separation not only within the conference but overall to try to identify where they may go as the season comes to an end. How about that victory for USF over Cincinnati huh? Cincinnati with 590 yards of offense last night and they lost the football game. And right now Pittsburgh fl playing from behind Deion Lewis. Gets to the line of scrimmage, picks up a, a yard. So Deion Lewis was 1,799 yards last year. Comes in averaging 3.8 as we take a look at the offensive lineup now for the Panthers. A Baldwin averaging about 15.3 yards a catch. Shanahan now up over 13 after scoring his first touchdown last week up front. Jason Pinkston, Alex Carabin, both fifth-year seniors. Pinkston, a three-year starter. Carabin, a one-time walk-on, getting his first start this year. Lucas Nix at right guard coming off his best game up at the Dome in Syracuse last week. Sinceri fires. Here's Baldwin. And that's his first catch of the afternoon. He had one for 61 last Saturday. David Rowe on the coverage defensively now for Rutgers Silvestro Noonan Valone and Freeney up front Antonio Lowry Bo Harness and Glaude Glaude getting his first start Lowry coming off a 19 tackle game it's Rowe and Bing on the corners Green and Lafege at the safeties a Green Hashim Green a brother of number one Ray Graham was in the backfield right now with Pittsburgh they won a state championship together in high school They've never lived in the same house, but they uh, remain extremely close. Sinceri, and he just uh, threw this one away. I mean, that pressure was coming from the outside. That's number four, David Rowe, coming up from that cornerback spot, and he was coming fast. He was coming hard, and pressure is the key for Rutgers, especially on third down. Greg Schiano loves to dial up more people than you can protect, so Pitt goes empty backfield. No protection for the quarterback other than the lineman up front, and uh, Rutgers gets there before Tino can make a decision. Good coverage to the short side of the field as well, Mike, where Sinceri wanted to go with the football. Dan Hutchins now will be punting from the 25. He leads the Big East, averaging 47.1. He averaged 50 in the Dome on five punts. 
Mason Robinson now back to the 16 yard line and he's dropped shy of the 25. 43 yard punt that time by Hutchins, a seven yard return by Robinson. Rutgers with the ball for the second time. Joe Martinick scoring the game's first touchdown. Compliments of uh, Charlie Noonan's uh, INT. 7 0 Rutgers on top. Liberty Mutual. Responsibility. What's your policy? Liberty Mutual. It's time for the Bud Light Playbook. Today, how to work the weekend without missing the game. What's up? Since we're stuck here working the weekend, I hooked up the projector to show the game. And I brought in some Bud Light. Excellent job. Yeah! Are they hiring? Bud Light, the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Coming up on the Sprint Halftime Show, we break down all of the first half highlights. I'm going to analyze Chase Dodd, freshman quarterback, taking his team into a hostile environment in Heinz Field. And I'll take a look at those pit running backs in the run game, see if they get it going. And I'm going to do a lot of listening. It's coming up on the Sprint Halftime Show. For Coach Coughlin's postgame comments, everybody wanted to win or crave access to a Giants football block. Constantly updated with the latest insider info and opinion on all things Big Blue. There's a place for that. No matter what the weather's like outside, it's always like summer at Harris Resort Atlantic City. Relax as you and your friends enjoy cocktails at our poolside paradise. Or get your thrills playing the tables from poker to blackjack. And then dance all night in the pool after dark, the East Coast's hottest nightclub. So ignore the forecast. Getaways are always in style at Harris Resort, Atlantic City. Grab your friends and register now for interactive cooking classes at the Viking Cooking School. Back at Heinz Field, we mentioned the brothers here. Number 20, that's Kasim Green, the Rutgers safety. On the left side is... Ray Graham, the running back for Pittsburgh, he leads Pitt in rushing this year, and uh, Green coming off a 10-tackle performance in that Army game. And, uh, John, they are extremely close, even though they've never lived in the same house. Yeah, it's funny talking with Ray, and, and we'll see him on Kinjemi's corner at halftime, but they talked about, you know, how they were looking forward to playing this game and, and going against each other and, and the familiarity they have with what each player can do. So it's, it's, a, it's a fun watch for us uh, knowing that background. Keep your eyes open and see how many tackles uh, Green can get on. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Graham here this afternoon. First and ten now for Dodd and the Scarlet Knights, playing for their uh, teammate Eric LeGrand. This is Dodd coming up, and he comes up firing, overshoots his man. They're looking for uh, Darren on the far side. What a state championship game. As a matter of fact, Green was injured in his final game, and uh, Graham walked up to him and said, hey, bro, I got you back. Graham wound up uh, scoring the uh, decisive touchdown in that state championship game. There was no question about the running ability of Ray Graham. It was halted last year by an injury, but this year he's just been on fire for the Panthers. Greg Schiano says it's been a challenging week, but good shot. Focus. There's a pump fake, and he's going down. Football is loose. There's a race to the ball. And it looks like number 73, Desmond Stapleton, got to it. Brandon Lindsay and Miles Karajin gave chase, but they can thank Desmond Stapleton for coming up with that football loss of eight. And John, last week, Dodd was sacked eight times by Army. Yeah, this is one thing that Dodd maybe want to, uh, you know, on the pump fake, you want to get rid of the football, but good coverage by the Panthers and good pressure by the Panthers. And that's one thing Phil Bennett would like to do today is pressure Dodd because he thinks he has a propensity to try to make the perfect pass. Third down and 18. They set up the screen. Young waiting for his blockers, but Max Gruder's there to make the initial contact. The middle linebacker, a gain of five, but... Uh, 
Way, way short of a first down. That'll bring up a punting situation for the Scarlet Knights. Well, it's what the Panthers wanted to do defensively on that set of downs. They needed to pressure the quarterback, and they've been able to pressure the quarterback in the last five games. 14 sacks. It's close to three per game, and that's what this defensive coordinator, Phil Bennett, wants to do for the Panthers. Pressure the young quarterback, try to get some turnovers. Teddy Delegato. The punt for Rutgers hits inside the 30-yard line. Sadler takes it at the 21. Sadler had his longest return last week up in the dome of 31 yards. Here he stopped shy of the 35. 56-yard punt by Teddy Delagana and a 13-yard return. Big East fans uh, want to win a trip with VIP access to the Beef O'Brady's Bowl. Catch some sun, four nights of fun at Trade Winds Resort and warm and sunny St. Pete Beach. Go to tradewindsresort.com slash win and enter today. Well, Mike, it took a while to get the football to Jonathan Baldwin last week, but you'd like to see them come out. They've only looked his way one time. Might be an opportunity to play action and get a big play from him. Penalty flags dropped before they got rolling. 85. Five-yard penalty. First down. It goes against Mike Cruz. Did not start against Syracuse, but got the message. Wound up uh, playing a pretty good football game. You know, it's interesting, John, when you look at, uh, we talked about this last week, Nate Byam was gone, uh, Doran Dickerson's gone, and Dave Wanstead said, you love to redshirt players. Well, neither Dickerson or Byam got to redshirt. If they had, they'd still be on this football field. Right yeah, now. Doran played multiple positions uh, as a Panther, and, you know, it takes away from the offensive line, too. You don't count those tight ends, but those two guys were huge in the, in the run blocking uh, for the Panthers over the last four years. Graham dotting the eye for the Panthers right now. First and 15. A whistles. Penalty flags dropped again. Delay of game. Offense. Number 12. It's early, John. First down. These pit fans are not happy. Well, that's one penalty that's you know, it's always on the quarterback, and you take pride as a quarterback and not getting a delay of game. And the Panthers are sixth in the Big East with penalties this year, and that's that's the second time to this afternoon that uh, Tino Sinceri has been called for delay of game. So you want to get the play in, get in and out of the huddle, so you have time to check if you need to at the line of scrimmage. Remember last week in Syracuse, as far as confidence, first play from scrimmage went for 79 yards for Sinceri to Devin Street. Here comes pressure. Sinceri steps up, has Shanahan over the 40-yard line. Gain of 17 on the play. Kasim Green makes the stop, but he was right on the money that time. Well, that's one way to make people stop booing and start clapping and get off uh, your fannies and clap. That was a terrific job by Sinceri. Good timing in the pass offense. When he lets this football go, Shanahan was coming right out of his break. A perfect strike over the middle for the Pitt Panthers. Move the chains. First down, Sinceri. They give it to uh, Graham on the ground. Spins over the 45. Drop to the 46. Joe Lefege. Coming up to make the stop, a gain of five more. Graham and Lewis, both sophomores. And Mike, this is the situation on the field where Frank Signetti, I thought when they came out on first and ten on this drive, they were going to go play action. They had everybody in tight, and they were going to try to hit Jonathan Baldwin deep. I would still look for a big play out of the Panthers trying to get a quick score here. More on Baldwin after this play. Sinceri backs off the line of scrimmage to check out that defense. Near side, Shanahan, nice grab. He's down near the 40 yard line. Well, Shanahan, he looks like a receiver, doesn't he? he looks you, like an NFL type receiver. You mentioned that during the pregame, looking down at Shanahan is just the way his mannerisms are and the way he goes about with ease. He waits till the football gets on him, puts his hands out, nice soft hands. That's a tough catch with the ball away from his frame of his body, but he makes it look easy, and that's what all good receivers have that quality. Three catches for 53. Our first and 10 line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Just twice now the Panthers have moved down the field. No running in that time. That could be an inadvertent face mask right there. That was Scott Ballone, the sophomore from New York, reaching out and grabbing and uh, inadvertently hooking up with that face mask. Personal foul. Personal foul. Face mask. Face mask. Defense. Defense. Number 94. 15 yard penalty. Well, automatic. I said inadvertently, but First uh, he gets the 15 yarder. Yeah, it's one of those situations you, you get a stop and start running back. And Ray Graham looked like he was going to go to the outside, stops immediately, and the linemen who can't stop with him keep going, and they just try to grab anything. And unfortunately for Scott Vallone, it was the face mask and Greg Schiano. So now his defense backed up to their own 25-yard line trying to figure out how they can pressure the pit quarterback. Ah! Ah! 
Jackson Sari. Little slam into the middle. That's street down to the 15 yard line. At Pitt's chapel service last Friday in Syracuse, prior to the uh, Syracuse game, it was all about redemption. Uh, Friday night, Ray Graham said they've uh, adopted that for the rest of the season. Time to redeem ourselves for that three and three start. And some of the guys that got trouble off the field. And this is the second time Pittsburgh has actually moved the ball. So you take away that INT and uh, offensively they seem to be hitting on all cylinders. Well, they were looking for the big play last week. Now they're looking to finish drives for Dave Wanstead. Boy, nice job on that uh, right side of the defensive line. Stopping a loss of one. Valona leading the attack at number 94. 6'3", 270 pounder. Again, before the Syracuse game, and Dave Wanstead said, uh, boy, touchdowns in the red zone. They were at 80% last year, and they had a pretty good football team last year, finishing second. This year, they were at 42%. Now, that's not red zone scoring. That's touchdowns in the red zone, but now they're at 48%. The Panthers have size. They might want to throw it up to one of those big wideouts. Nelson Sari definitely looking for one, and he uh, finds his receiver. That's the uh, fullback, though, Henry Hanoski. Richard Jr. makes the grab, only uh, a gain of a yard. That's his 11th reception of the year. You know, Hanoski, John, he had over 7,100 yards in high school, 113 touchdowns, 51 in senior year, and uh, he's happy just to uh, contribute. He offense. did everything, Mike. You know, he could run, he can block, he can catch, and he's taking that from high school to college and he's done a terrific job for as the pit fullback. Sinceri, plenty of time. Looks fires. Hanoski inside the five yard line. Penalty flag drop. Hanoski complete. Flag on the play. Gate of 12 on the play. Joe Lefege. There's the call. I'll join him again. It goes against Rutgers. And that's going to move it even closer. Holding. Holding. Defense. Defense. Number 23. 23. Penalty decline. decline. First down. First down. Decline the penalty. They keep it near the five yard line as we check in with Amy. Well, Mike, that last reception is going to make hundreds of fans here happy, especially those who made the trip from Henry's alma mater, Southern Columbia Avenue, about four and a half hours away. They left the area at 5.30 this morning. They're making sure they were here in time for the Panther Prowl. So many 27 jerseys on display in Heinz Field today. Amen. Three bus loads. Graham tries to break to the outside, and he has nowhere to go. His Rutgers really are zeroed in at number one. See number 45 there. That's Alex Silvestro along with David Rowe coming up from that cornerback spot. Two guys making the initial contact on uh, Graham. Three busloads for Hanoski. I thought maybe one, but three. That's amazing. <laughs> He's a popular guy, and they left early. And somebody who would like to leave early in running the football is Ray Graham. He's had no luck going to the left side of that Panther offensive line. He may... Uh, be a little bit easier going to the right side where they moved Lucas Nix to that right guard position. Graham three for two yards, three carries, two yards. This is Lewis. Sinceri, play action. Oh, they're trying to get it to Hanoski to please those three busloads of fans. You know, four times he won a state championship. One big time college football player to come from the school. Well, you got to hope he's okay because that right knee looked like it just gave way when Henry was trying to get north and south up the field. You can see him trying to bend that ankle and 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 knee that right leg uh, on the replay. A good decision by Sinceri. Everybody covered downfield, but watch when he plants right there. He, it buckles underneath him, and you just hope that Henry's okay. Yeah, he stays in there. 260 pounder as tough as nails. Sinceri. He has another touchdown. That's Mike Cruz, and that's his first touchdown. A three-yard score last week. Shanahan, Brock DeSico, Devin Street all scored their first touchdowns, and now Mike Cruz has his first. Yeah, add Mike Cruz to the list. Play action on third down. A good job by Sinceri just putting enough air underneath that football to get it over the Rutgers secondary and linebacking core, but that's a nice call by offensive coordinator Frank Signetti just to get that tight end to the back corner, the back pylon of the end zone. Ben Hutchins, we mentioned the fact he averaged 47 yards or 50 yards last week. 
on for the extra point. He was named the Big East Special Teams Player of the Week. Drills it right down the middle of the highway, and uh, we are tied now at 7-7. Tino Sinceri, the redshirt sophomore. That's touchdown number 10 for him, number one for Cruz. I can't always get to the bank, but I can still bank. I have the Bank of America mobile banking app. I can take care of things on my break. I can check my balance. While I'm on a bus. I'm waiting at the barbershop. The studio. My paycheck's already in. <laughs> I just transfer money. I went online and set up alerts to let me know if my balance drops below $200. You can pay your bills online. You enter the amount, then make payment. Boom. Done. Wish I was. Bank whenever, wherever, however you want. With mobile and online banking from Bank of America. I don't like commitment, that's what it is. No contracts when you sign up for Vonage sounds amazing. I didn't know that you could have all these features and this incredible plan without a contract. Tell me more, let me switch. For just $14.99, get unlimited domestic and international calling, now without an annual contract. I have some really good friends who live in Switzerland, and I call them quite a bit now. It's really nice being able to keep our phone conversations longer. It's a great feeling. I switched to Vonage, and I'm never looking back. Jeter, the guy's got an edge. Derek Jeter? That guy's got an edge. Oh, definitely an edge. He's got an edge. Holy. Porque tiene un edge. Jeter, you know he's got an edge. He so has an edge. He's got an edge, baby. And I got it with this cool panoramic Vista roof. Now, current competitive lessees can get the new 2011 edge for just $2.29 a month for 27 months. Unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. Only at your Tri-State Ford dealer. When people say, Mike, why Ford? Why now? You know what I tell them? Fuel efficiency. Take the Ford Focus with up to an EPA-estimated 35 highway miles per gallon. Gas mileage is huge for me, so that's great. Or the 2010 Ford Fusion, the fuel economy that Honda Accord and Toyota Camry can top. Amazing. And if you're looking for the most fuel-efficient SUV on the planet, that would be the Escape Hybrid. Ford's helping make the world a little greener. Now, current competitive lessees can lease an Escape for $209 a month for 27 months. Just $209. Visit your local Ford dealer and drive for we're all tied up at seven in Pittsburgh, an all-season long champion apparel. will be showcasing the tradition and history of the Big East Conference. And today we uh, take a look at that Hall of Fame room uh, over at the uh, Pitt football facility. They share this facility with the Pittsburgh Steelers. As you take a look at uh, some of the great players uh, that have played, there's uh, Shady McCoy, of course, a touchdown Tony. Tony Dorsett right there. And, you know, speaking of Hall of Fame, you know, Russ Grimm and Ricky Jackson are joining Ditka, Schmidt, and Dorsett Marino in the uh, NFL Hall of Fame this year and um, well you, you know you look at Grimm Russ Grimm four Super Bowls winning three but you know Jackson 15 years in the NFL played with the uh, 49ers Super Bowl but 13 with the Saints 128 sacks third all time when he retired and as far as some of the uh, faces and names around the stadium if Steve Peterson the athletic director is sitting back nursing a uh, soda right now or EJ Borghetti the media relations guy John Congemi when he graduated, he was second to only Dan Marino in passing yards, and he was third all-time in total yards behind Marino and Dorsett. And uh, so I hope his name is down there. We're going to have to go down on the field and see you after the game. I've got a big marker, Mike. We can go down there. <laughs> Rutgers starting at the 20-yard line as we take a look at uh, Southern Cal leading the parade as far as Hall of Fame inductees, followed by the uh, Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. And Pittsburgh now with six, just one behind Syracuse, Alabama, and Ohio State. It's amazing. You mentioned Ricky Jackson all those years playing in the NFL. But when he was here, Hugh Green got all the accolades. But he was the guy on the other side that was uh, cleaning up the trash that Hugh uh, left there. Two terrific linebackers and defensive. That those guys could get after you on the edge. And I know opposing quarterbacks, you looked at one side, you saw 99, and then you saw Ricky Jackson wow. on the other side. That was a, a tough uh, duo. I never even thought of that. Uh, Hugh Green with 49 sacks, number one all time here at Pitt. Chase Dodd, the freshman quarterback, rolling, buying time, fires Sanu. That's complete over the 35 yard line, a first down, a gain of 18 that time. Well, there you see the patience of a young quarterback. Chase Dodd only making his third start. He had plenty of protection to let himself roll gently to the right side and give time for his big target, Sanu, to get across the middle of that field. That takes patience. That takes courage to stay back there, and I think that you're going to see a lot of that today in Dodd. Chase Dodd making his third start, replacing Tom Savage, the freshman All-American a year ago. Martinek puts his head down. 
Boy, he moves the pile to the 40-yard line. He turns a loss into a gain of three. Miles Karajin finally brings him down to the uh, turf. Wayman talked about Joe Martinick earlier in the broadcast, and you take a look at Dodd's numbers versus UConn and Army. Just terrific job of moving the football and not making mistakes, but making big plays down the field. He does a great job, and Martinick, this is the first time he's really felt close to 100%, had a great week of practice, so they're going to utilize his, his running ability today. They keep it on the ground. Martinick again running hard. He said he had an ankle, but boy, he looks so pretty healthy. Max Gruder finally rides him down. A gain of eight more on the play for Rutgers in the running game, who had minus one rushing against the Army. Now, now of course, they were sacked eight times, so that's put into the equation, but minus one. Well, you can tell the piles are moving north and south for Rutgers, and that's what they do when he's healthy. Scarlet Knights scoring first to playing for their teammate, Eric Legrand, the junior defensive tackle. Who's back at the Hackensack University Medical Center? We're back with the second quarter after this. Polaris is having a factory authorized clearance, which means you can get financing as low as 3.99% and up to $1,200 in rebates on vehicles like the Ranger Razor or the Sportsman XP or the Ranger XP. That's financing as low as 3.99% and up to $1,200 in rebates. Hey, it's all about the deal. That's all you need to know, right? All deal, no hype. The Polaris factory authorized clearance. Going on now. Hi, I'm Stormy Simon. At Overstock.com, we've designed our site to be easy to shop, and we have the low prices you want every day on name brand products up to 70% off. We care about our customers, and our award-winning customer care team is available whenever you need help. And remember, whether you shop online or on your mobile phone, your entire order ships for just $2.95. Overstock.com, at home with the O. You've never seen fast. You've never held it in your hand and unleashed it with a fingertip. Never watched pixels whip by at one gigahertz and had your neurons struggle to keep up. You've never seen fast because you've never seen this. The Droid Incredible by HTC. It's nothing short of its name. Buy a Droid Incredible with Flash and get any phone free. You've seen cars customized and restored. Now it's time for Automat in Hicksville to do yours. Over 50 years in business, winner of the National Trimmer of the Year Award. We're your one-stop shop for auto interiors and tops, mechanical and electrical service, paint and body work, custom audio, video, rims, accessories, and more. Visit Automat in Hicksville, the largest and most recommended in the business. We'll restore the passion you feel for your car. The images from Haiti are heartbreaking. Homes, hospitals, and schools are destroyed. Families searching for loved ones, parents trying to feed their children. But we can all do something. We can help the American Red Cross as it delivers the food, water, and medicine that can save lives. Donate $10 by texting Haiti to 90999. Visit redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS. Thanks for your help. Definitely one of the most picturesque cities in sports. One of the most picturesque cities, period. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, as we look down as the Monongahela and Allegheny connects. And uh, we'll come back and we'll check which one's the Allegheny there, John. But <laughs> let's go down and check in with Eamon. Well, Mike, the message from Coach Greg Schiano this week was a simple one. Believe. When he first met the media on Sunday, he said, we believe Eric Legrand will walk again. And that's the message to his players. And it's on their helmet right there in the front. And some of the players think that's perfect placement because every time you look a teammate in the eye, you see that word, believe. We all believe in each other, and we all believe in Eric. Mike? Great point, Eamon. That is a perfect placement. They all believe that uh, someday Eric Legrand, their teammate suffering that injury last week against Army at the Meadowlands, will walk out on that field again. Adam Tallaferro, the former Penn State player who was at Ohio State, suffered a similar injury. He did walk five months later. His message to Eric Legrand, stay positive. 
Dodd coming down the middle. This one's picked off. DeSico. Last year, DeSico had 10 tackles in this game, and he intercepted Tom Savage on October 16th. It was the first INT that Savage had thrown all season. Well, that's a, a little wrinkle that Phil Bennett had put in for this week. They haven't shown that since the second half against Utah. This is called switch coverage, where the safety from one side looks like he's going to be to the short side of the field. That's Dom DeSico. He'll go and act like the tight end is free, but he'll come off that hash late. And when you have an inexperienced quarterback that likes to make the big play down the field, DeSico was just playing a little cat and mouse, and he came out from the hash mark and makes a big play for the Panther defense. Pretty much worked exactly how Coach Bennett said it would, huh? Pretty, yeah, it did. <laughs> and Oski leading the way for Deion Lewis. He's up over the 30, stopped at about the 32-yard line. Gain of two on the play. Let's take a look down at today's Bud Light playbook, John. We're going to see Dom DeSico. He's the guy that's going to be to the top of the screen right here. Now, he has he's responsible for the deep third back here. The tight end's going to think he has a free release, and nobody's down the middle of the field because the safety's going to widen. But you're going to see after the play action, DeSico's going to come off that hash and, and just appear from nowhere because he's supposed to be to the wide side or to the Rutgers sideline. Lewis again, and again, not too much running room against that uh, Rutgers defensive front, a gain of three on the play. You know, we're talking with uh, Coach Bennett, the defensive coordinator, now saying, you know, some of these guys in the Wildcat, they don't throw it that well, but after he explained it, I understand you don't have to, right? Because if the safety makes the wrong play, that guy's wide open. Yeah, he's the last line of defense, those safeties against that Wildcat, and you do a good job of disguising, and that's what Phil Bennett likes to do. He likes to disguise, and he put that wrinkle in for a young quarterback in today's game. Phil to the left. Jeff Halfley right there sitting next to him. Uh, more on Halfley uh, after this play. Well, those two are joined at the hip down. The sincerity steps up, fires, finds his man Hanoski again, just shy of that first down. Jeff Halfley, according to Phil Bennett, said, this guy's the next Urban Meyer. He is just uh, outstanding as far as uh, coaching college football. And he's a great recruiter, and he does a great job in the... Uh, in that department in New Jersey and going out and getting kids and Pitts always had a good relationship in New Jersey. Uh, I, I can go back to teammates of mine, uh, uh, Craig Hayward and, uh, and Tony Woods and guys like that. And Tony Saragusa, uh, you know, coming from the, the state of New Jersey. Halfway from New Jersey, nine players on this Pittsburgh football team hail from uh, the Garden State and uh, 11 overall when you throw in New York and toss in the Pittsburgh coaches and there's 15. From New Jersey, New York. Hutchins back to punt at the 25. Mason Robinson standing at his 15 yard line. Robinson at the 17. Spin up to the 20. Hutchins gets off a 44 yard punt. Robinson returns at four. We're going to step away from Heinz Field. We're deadlocked at seven. Pitt and Rutgers. Things different now that I'm not crushing quarterbacks every Sunday. Yeah, a little bit, but I still have a taste for greatness. So I love Dr. Pepper. The taste of these 23 flavors can never be equal, like me. Pizza Perfect Nab. I got it. Donovan. Mike. What? Mike. Oh. Come on, Mike, man. Still got it. There's nothing like a pepper. Trust me, I've sent people to the doctor. Oh. From the outside, you can't experience the suspension geometry and kinematics of a finely tuned sports sedan. From the outside, you can't tell we built it on an ultra-strength steel chassis that reduces noise and vibration. But once you're on the road, that's when you discover the precision of the sport-injected 2011 Regal from Buick. Halloween. You have to see the final Saw. Saw 3D. This time, I'm coming for you. Rated R. In 3D and 2D theaters Friday. Blimpy has been a part of America's tradition for over 40 years. Our subs are made with fresh baked breads. Quality meats and cheeses sliced to order. Taste the difference freshness makes. Blimpy, America's sub shop. Uh, unfortunately... 
the breakfast scones will be replaced by breakfast muffins. Additionally, meeting cantaloupe will unfortunately be eliminated. You're asked to bring in your own fruit, uh, perhaps even something handheld. Maybe that's an apple. Uh, for some, that might be a banana. All right, let's just keep it rolling, rolling, rolling. Page 79. Um, unfortunately, I'm called upon to review the dry erase board rules. Days on SNY. Get on the New York Sports Local. Your direct line to the day's top New York sports stories. Oh, what a debacle. Packed with debate. I'm just asking. And opinion. Please, take a hike. Bringing you to a team of diverse personalities. I have as much confidence in him as I got in road game right now. As passionate about New York sports. Oh, I'm fired up. As you are. Oh, for the love of Mike. Daily News Live, Wheelhouse, and Loudmouths. All part of the New York Sports Local. Weekdays starting at 5 on SNY. It's New York Sports here. Dave Wanstead and the Pitt Panthers are tied up at Pittsburgh now 7-7 here in the second quarter. We're in Heinz Field as Greg Shano looking to bounce back after the loss last year in Piscataway. Dedicating this game, dedicating the season to Eric Legrand, the defensive tackle, who's back at the Hackensack University Medical Center, along with John Congemi, Eamon McEnany, Mike Gleason here as you take a look at the turnovers. And as we take a look at our Big East leaders, brought to you by PNC for the achiever in us all. See, Rutgers uh, at plus five. It's been a situation where Greg Schiano loves to coach defense, and they've been able to turn opposing offenses over, and that's why they lead the conference in that turnover margin category. They forced 34 last year. In the last 24 games, 59 forced turnovers. Chase Dodd, he's thrown a pick uh, today, as is uh, Tony Sincero. Mark Nick, uh, gets the carry up to the uh, 25. Antoine Reed makes the stop. They pick up five. We really like the way that Joe Martinix has that extra burst today. We saw him earlier in the season against FIU. and We've watched some of the games that Rutgers has played. And he's not been close to 100 percent. Well, he's closer to 100 percent than he's been since the start of the year. And you can tell when he gets outside and has some space, he's got that extra gear today. All time leading high school rusher in the state of New Jersey flirted with a 1000 yard season last year. And they keep it on the ground. Rutgers last year only gained 38 yards rushing against this pit defense. They pick up four. And again, Martinek uh, gets the call. You know, talking about this young quarterback, Chase Dodd, uh, John, talking with Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator for Pittsburgh, he said the poise is amazing. He said fourth and two down 17 3 to Army last week. He made the play. His first pass against Tulane was third and 11. He came in and made the play. The kid just makes plays. Yeah, he does. And right now he's going to watch on a third and short as Rutgers goes to the Wildcat. And it looks like Jeremy Deering will be that guy taking the snap in the shotgun formation. 6 2 2 0 3. True freshman from Tampa. And he's going to pick up the first down. They were one for two. So now two for three on third down conversions. And Dom DeSico finally made the stop, but not before. Deering picks up the first down in five yards. Well, he's doing a nice job filling in for Mohamed Sanu, who's usually that guy in the Wildcat. And he doesn't have that much experience at it with Rutgers. He's run it before this season, but in high school, his numbers were off the charts in running the football at the quarterback position. He's just going to lower his head and tuck in behind Lowry, big number 75, and move the pile towards that first down. Boy, he looks athletic, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. And he's going to stay on the field. This time they hand it off. And they try to sweep that right corner. It's number 29, Jordan Thomas, the true freshman from New York. And Antoine Reed makes another stop, but they pick up eight on the play. And number 87, uh, that's a junior, Fabian Ruiz, out of Miami, down for Rutgers. Yeah, speaking of Mohamed Sanu, last year as a uh, freshman, 51 pass reception, 639 yards. He rushed for 346. The MVP of the bowl game as we check back in with Eamon McEnany. Eamon? Well, Mike, as Ruiz gets looked at on the field, D.C. DC Jefferson also has been out of this game since that touchdown drive. He left his an left ankles heavily wrapped, but he's been alternating between running on the uh, field and the bike trying to get back out there, but uh, he's still not out there. So right now, Mike, uh, Rutgers pretty thin at the tight end position. Evan Lampert, number 98, going to have to pretty much take over right now. And Eamon uh, Jefferson, the last two games, 113 yards on six catches, and John, he's averaging over 20 yards a catch now. And he's a stud. He's just becoming comfortable, I think, in the tight end position and they're doing a good job in running the football and you have to have those tight ends in there those big bodies along with that offensive lineman to be able to run the football in Rutgers in this drive 
four rushes in a row. So with Ruiz down and D.C. Jefferson on the sideline trying to get back in to the football game, you may see Rutgers try to spread the football out a little bit, maybe go to some Wildcat or just go no backs and see if they can uh, put the game in the hands of Chase Dodd. You know, I thought it was interesting talking with Greg Schiano yesterday. I really appreciated his honesty. I said, you know, you, the last two games you've come from behind to win it. Kind of like becoming the uh, cardiac kids. I said, what's the message to your team? Hey, let's get this thing rolling in the first half. And he said, I don't know if we're capable because we're so young. And I really appreciated that honesty, but they're moving a little bit better on the ground here. Yeah, 59 yards rushing today. And you talk about the productivity in the fourth quarter, especially with the young quarterback in Chase Dodd. In two games as a starter, Mike, Dodd is 16 for 22. That's just over 70% completions for 285 yards and three touchdowns in the fourth quarter alone in his start. So they get a lot done in the fourth quarter. Well, Scarlet Knight basketball fans follow Rutgers as they compete in a doubleheader featuring Auburn, Tennessee, and Pittsburgh in the Direct TV SEC Big East Basketball Invitational December 11th at the Council Energy Center here in Pittsburgh. For tickets and more information, visit www.secbigeastinvitational.com. Dodd feels the pressure. He's going down for the second time. The second sack for the Panthers at 16 now. Shear gets it. He has six on the season. Shear gets there, and there was a host of Panthers in that backfield really making the young quarterback, Chase Dodd, feel uncomfortable. So on second down, defensive coordinator Phil Bennett turns up the heat a little bit, and that pocket was collapsing. It looked like he had protection, but then there's that 97, Jabal Sheard, who's been the playmaker up front with the absence of Greg Romeus for the Pitt Panther defense. Loss of eight on the play after a Sheard six sack. And Pittsburgh fans sit up and take notice. Greg Romeus has been cleared. He could be playing next week. And he's going down again. This time, Sheard encouraging team up for the third sack of the afternoon. That gives them 17 at defensive front. Last year they had 47 sacks. 37 came from the big boys up front. Well, this is one of the things that you do. You bring pressure up the middle and you get some pressure on the outside and that's going to help collapse the pocket. The linebackers come just a little bit of a twist on the inside and there's the speed rusher on the outside with Beard but Karajin was there first to clean up the young quarterback. Miles Karajin. Five sacks last year, same as uh, Mick Williams on fewer snaps, and he gets his first sack. Injury on the field, the loss of seven on that sack. That's Desmond Stapleton down on the field while they treat him. We'll take a timeout. series generators are perfect for hardcore tailgaters. They provide reliable power for all sorts of things and they're incredibly quiet. Uh -oh. I got this one. Which neighbors really appreciate. Honda generators. Bring it. and BlackBerry have teamed up to keep your business moving. Introducing the BlackBerry Torch. AT&T. Rethink possible. Hi. Sorry, Files. 3G Network's backed up again. Come on, man. We have a show to stream. I thought this is the network where you pay to go fast. Oh, you pay. But it's nowhere near as fast as optimum Wi-Fi. What does that cost? It's free. This is ridiculous! Why are you two smiling? We're wedding, wedding photos. photos. Oh. Optimum Wi-Fi, twice as fast as 3G and free for Optimum online customers. Turn on your Optimum Wi-Fi. Optimum Voice, the phone service for as little as $19.95 a month. It's going to change the world. Let's start with unlimited calling to the U.S., Canada, and Puerto Rico. How's the weather? He's hot. How's the weather? It's cold. Global warming? <laughs> I don't think so. And for as little as $19.95 a month, you also get free 411. Call 888-45-CHANGE and get Optimum Voice for as little as $19.95 a month. Change the world. 
Tied at seven in Pittsburgh. Dave Wanstead, Greg Schiano, no strangers to one another. Eamon? Well, Mike, uh, earlier this week we spoke to Greg Schiano about all the support he received from his coaching colleagues. And, of course, Dave Wanstead gave him a call. These two go way, well back. Uh, when Dave Wanstead was with the Chicago Bears, he was looking for a defensive coach, and he got a tip from a friend say, hey, I got a kid for you at Penn State. So he brought him in for an interview, hired him right away. And then later on when things didn't work out with the Bears, Butch Davis was looking for a defensive coordinator down at the University of Miami. Dave Wanstead said, hey, look, I got a guy for you. And that's when Greg Schiano went down to Miami. And I found it interesting yesterday when Coach Wanstead told us, look, if there's a coach who's going to handle this situation the right way, it's going to be Greg Schiano. Yeah, I thought that was the ultimate compliment as uh, Sadler takes the punt over the 30-yard line. And he's uh, drilled at about the uh, 31. Penalty flag down. Uh, coming up to make the uh, tackle was Robert Jones after the 54-yard punt and a 12-yard return. Holding. On the offense, on the number offense. 20. Number the 10 yard penalty will be enforced from the end, the, from the end of the kick. First down. First Has to be an exhausting week for that man right there, Greg Schiano, after practice uh, every day, driving 45 minutes to the Hackensack University Medical Center to visit with Eric Legrand, his injured teammate, and then driving back home and getting his team ready to play Pittsburgh and then driving back 45 minutes. That's 90 minutes a day of driving. And, uh, I don't think he got much sleep. No, I don't think many of the, uh, the you know, parents, the, the fans, the teammates uh, of Eric got a lot of sleep this week. And it's one of those things where you try to bring the spirit and the pride that Eric brought every day to practice. And you try to bring it to Heinz Field and, and play with that today against the Panthers. Play action, Sinceri. Going for the home run ball. And it's, is that caught? John Baldwin reaches out with his right arm and pulls it in. Hey, I only got one catch last week. I wanted to see that ball. He went up and got it. That's a big time catch. And he only had one hand and one arm because David Rowe had the other one tucked firmly on his side. That's a perfect throw. And this is one thing that's been missing from this offense. Last week, they get the big play. And now today, they get a huge play by Jonathan Baldwin. Look at the arm that's, that's grabbed right there by number four. David Rowe has the left arm. But Baldwin reaches out with the right one for the catch. 46 yards on the play. Graham stutter steps, cuts back. He has the touchdown. 13 yards for Ray Graham. Twenty pounds heavier, John, but hasn't lost his moves. Yeah, watch the little move on the outside on Joe Lefez. Joe thought he was cutting out. Ray had other ideas. He cuts inside, and the Panthers celebrate their lead. Lefez, one of the better safeties. Looking back, wondering what was that? That was a blur. Hutchins on again, and again he converts. And the Panthers trying to climb over the 500 mark. John Baldwin, Tino Sinceri, they worked out a lot this summer, but it's Ray Graham with the touchdown. Just a terrific job by Sinceri going up and put, placing the football perfectly for Baldwin Whoa. to adjust on the outside. A terrific one-hand catch, and that sets up Ray Graham to go outside and then back to the inside with that nice cut. Outraces his brother to the end zone for the Panther touchdown. And officially, that's a 47-yard catch now for number 82, John Baldwin. The junior, and I say the junior because athletically, you got to wonder if he goes to the combine and uh, starts touching hey, what's up, Daddy? I mean, showing 42, 43-inch verticals if uh, he's not a uh, first-round pick. But uh, the coaches says he's not. they're not running the uh, greatest routes. So you wonder if he will be back next year for Pittsburgh. Well, you know what? You hope that he is for the Panthers' sake as Ray Graham celebrates on the sidelines because he has that big play ability. And John Baldwin can make big plays on the outside as well as Lewis and Graham on the inside. But Baldwin's the key to this passing attack. You're going to get consistency from Mike Shanahan and Devin Street, but you're going to get big plays from John Baldwin and there you see his numbers just creeping up the all-time ranks here at the University of Pittsburgh and he's going to uh, get closer to the top as if, he, if he keeps making plays down the field like that. Kevin Harper with his first kick and it's a good one. Lefez in the end zone. Spins over the 20-yard line. Sees some room over the 35. Drops shy of the 40. Joe LaFege 
Rutgers came in averaging 26.5 yards a return number one in the Big East Lefebvre goes 38 that time and that's a nice comeback by Joe Lefebvre he was faked out around the 10 yard line on that defensive stand but he would not go down on special teams five and six blue shirts around him but he breaks the arm tackles and DeSico makes a huge play on special teams he had the interception but makes a big tackle on the kickoff coverage team now the Big East Network bringing you all the action uh, next Saturday October 30th the Louisville Cardinals fly right in here at Heinz Field to take on the Spit Panthers. It all gets in the way next Saturday, October 30th at noon Eastern, only on the Big East Network. Dodd bobbled the snap. He swings it out. Wow, Roberts comes up and makes the stop. Christian Roberts, a loss of two on the play. And it looks like Mike Ruiz is down again for Rutgers, the tight end. Redshirt Jr. from uh, Pennsylvania, and uh, Dave wants it saying he probably played his best career or his best game of his career last week in Syracuse. Nephew of Tim Lewis, the former Pitt Panther, who uh, I believe played with you. Yeah, teammate of mine. Tim was a senior when I was a freshman here at Pitt. You're right, that's Fabian Ruiz, 6'4, 245 pound junior from Miami, back down on the field. So Rutgers, of course, uh, playing for their uh, teammate. I, I think moments ago I said uh, Greg Schiano and his teammates, Eric Legrand. Uh, of course, that's his player, Eric Legrand, but this week they're all teammates there at Rutgers. And Greg Schiano, a junior defensive tackle from New Jersey, uh, suffered that serious spinal injury last week while making a tackle on the uh, kickoff late in the fourth quarter. He was taken to the Hackensack University Medical Center where they uh, performed emergency surgery overnight for his C3 and C4 vertebrae. Remains at the hospital with the family members and there certainly has been an outpouring of love and support from coaches, players, fans all across the country. Greg Shano says he's a fighter and believe is the operative word for Rutgers. And as he told Eamon at the, uh, the top of the show, he said it's uh, unbelievable the outpouring of uh, support he's received and it just confirms to him uh, all the great people in this game of college football and especially from the Big East Conference you know the coaches uh, the players the fans it's just uh, tremendous that you see the support not only for you know from the Rutgers fans but from the Pittsburgh fans and from everyone in the Big East Conference that uh, you know they're all pulling for Eric to, to make a, a full recovery. And we weren't sure if uh, Eric would be watching this broadcast or not. That was his call. If he is, we send out a hello to Eric, and uh, you're certainly missed by your teammates, and we wish you the best. Absolutely. Second and 12 now for Dodd. Twin receivers to the bottom of your screen. And a uh, good fake that time. I thought it was a play action pass, but Brandon Lindsay has sniffed out the run. No gain. As Martin got back to the line of scrimmage. See Pittsburgh now averaging just under nine yards a play. Rutgers at 3.7. And it's one of those things we talked about in the open, the big play back in the pit offense, and that adds to that average. And Rutgers right now trying to make a big play on third and long. Rutgers averaging 21 points. That's eighth in the Big East. 111 yards rushing. That's eighth in the Big East. Boy, Dodd. He had that sixth cent stepped up at the right time and completes the ball. Complete. A gain of 14 on the play. Brandon Lindsay was coming on strong. Mohamed Sanu. Well, that's the one thing you get with dotted quarterback. He has the mobility, Mike, to keep plays alive with his legs, and he's able to keep his head downfield and pick up the alternate, you know, the fourth or fifth guy receiving the football. That's good concentration by Sanu, keeping that foot in bounds because it looked like it had been easy to step out of bounds. Yeah, that was great concentration. You see uh, D.C. Jefferson back on the field, number 10. He's the lead blocker for Martinick, and Martinick's inside the 45, down to the 44. Don DeSico making the stop, but Joe Martinick picks up five more. Came from 17-3 last week against Army. They trailed, came back and won that game in overtime, and keep chopping. That's the Rutgers mantra. They keep chopping, and they want to get it to the fourth quarter because Rutgers has outscored opponents in that quarter 40 points to three points. So Rutgers hasn't done much until they get to the fourth quarter, but when they get there, they've been very productive. Dodd fires. 
Williams has his man. It's complete inside the uh, 40. That's Mark Harrison with his first catch of the afternoon. His 14th of the season. Antoine Reed on the coverage for Pittsburgh. Can't say enough about the young quarterback and his numbers today. Seven of nine for 57 yards, one interception, but just the knack to make a play on third and 11 in a type of game where you want to keep these plays and these drives going against this Panther defense. Overstock, first and 10 line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Ball resting just shy of the 38 yard line for Chase Dodd and the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Thought he had an opening if he broke to the outside. Cuts it back in and Max Gruder makes the stop. A gain of one on the play. Penalty flag dropped at the 30. May get Rutgers for a chop block here. Personal foul. Legal block a little waste. Offense, number 28. 15-yard penalty. First down. Well, they're moving it back. They average about nine penalties a game, 54 yards a game, and that's a, that's a big one as they try to go in for the equalizer here, trailing by a touchdown, 14 to 7. You look at the depth chart, John, of this young Rutgers team, 14 players on the two deeps are either freshman or sophomore. That's just on the offensive side of the ball. 11 on defense are either freshman or sophomore. Well, that's a big penalty, Mike, and it brings the Rutgers offense to their side of the 50-yard line. So now the pressure back on Chase Dodd to get this rhythm and continue this drive. First and 25. Boy, Dodd wisely throws it out of bounds. The true freshman certainly does have a lot of poise. I threw for, what, 80 touchdowns in high school, over 10,000 yards? Well, that was the one thing when Greg Schiano was trying to find a quarterback to recruit. He, he went down to Fort Lauderdale and his high school, Dodd's high school, Burns, South Carolina, played St. Thomas Aquinas where I went to high school. And he said, that's all I needed to see. I knew he was good, but when I saw him live, I wanted to make everybody, you know, turn their head and say, well, maybe not that interested, but I knew I had a quarterback. He maybe didn't fit everybody's uh, chart with the height and weight, but I knew he could play the position. Yeah, in that game against St. Thomas Aquinas, he threw for over 400 yards. And uh, yet, Wake Forest, he thought he might get an offer from Wake Forest, but uh, Greg Schiano, to his credit, saw his potential. Mark Neck inside the Pittsburgh territory, a gain of five more. Holly makes the stop. Marcus Lattimore, his teammate, uh, not doing a bad job there at South Carolina as well. <laughs> That's a pretty good running back to have in high school. Both of these guys coming from high school and, and playing immediately for their respective schools at South Carolina for Lattimore and Chase Dodd for Rutgers and doing a terrific job as young as young players in college football. And uh, Dodd's numbers there, five and two. It's now five and three, of course, after throwing the INT down to Seco. Pulled down the interception, his second of the season. Dodd fires. Well, that's a long throw. As he was looking for the freshman Deering, uh, Ricky Gary, who had that 80 yard pick six last week on the coverage. Well, good job by the Panthers trying to force Rutgers after the penalty of the illegal block. They do a good job of going three plays and out after the penalty. And Pitt had good coverage there for Dave Wanstad and defensive coordinator Phil Bennett. So now the Panthers may be backed up, but they have an opportunity to get the football back before halftime. Teddy Delegato, he has a 54 yard punt already this afternoon. He's dropped 52 career punts inside the 20, but this one finds the end zone. So the Pitt Panthers will be at the 20-yard line when we come back. 47-yard punts, net of 27. 14-7, Pittsburgh on top.
a customer is that we're almost everywhere. Thousands of banking centers. And so many ATMs. All over the place. The new ATM machines are really cool. No deposit slips. No envelopes. Deposit your checks right here and get the check images on your receipt. We have banking apps for mobile phones. Don't forget online banking. You can set up alerts. Transfer funds. See your balances. Thousands of banking centers. Loads of ATM. Mobile banking. Online banking. Text banking. I'm going to get back to work. Bank whenever, wherever, however you want with Bank of America. No matter what the weather's like outside, it's always like summer at Harris Resort Atlantic City. Relax as you and your friends enjoy cocktails at our poolside paradise. Or get your thrills playing the tables from poker to blackjack. And then dance all night in the pool after dark, the East Coast's hottest nightclub. So ignore the forecast. Getaways are always in style at Harris Resort Atlantic City. Grab your friends and register now for interactive cooking classes at the Viking Cooking School. The 3 Series exemplifies the essence of BMW. It has the ingredients of the perfect sports sedan. Everything is balanced, everything works in harmony, everything is perfectly engineered. That's why car and driver staff buy this car more than any other. Get 0.9% financing, or for the first time ever, pay nothing down on a well-equipped 2011 BMW 3 Series sedan. Inside five minutes before halftime here in Pittsburgh, 14-7 Panthers on top of the Scarlet Knights. We'd like to recognize our friends at Allstate for their charitable contributions across the country. Since 2005, Allstate has donated more than $2.2 million to the Good Hands Field Goal Net Program to benefit University General Scholarship Funds. All right, John Jemmy, uh, you left here as a uh, the number two all-time leading passer when you did leave. How is Sinceri doing today? I think he's having a terrific afternoon, 11 of 13 for 139, one touchdown, one interception, and he's thrown nine straight completions hitting five different receivers. So he's uh, off to a great start. Wants to put it up, fires. Baldwin has a second catch over the 35, dropped at the 37-yard line. Kasim Green makes the tackle, a gain of 18 more. So Baldwin obviously a little more into the game. I thought it was interesting, John, as we take another look at it. Uh, Frank Signetti said if you're not running the right route, you got to have that trust with the quarterback. You're not going to see the ball. Well, play action helps. And any time you can run the football, you saw all the linebackers really close to the line of scrimmage. That gives the quarterbacks in Syria a great throwing lane to hit his big target, Baldwin. Panthers in the eye formation this time. Sinceri going deep again. And the same play, but this time Baldwin will not catch up to it. I thought it was interesting, John. Baldwin and Sinceri, this summer they were, uh, Baldwin would call them up and say, hey, it was nighttime already. Well, let's go back and uh, work on some things. And they were throwing the bad ball. I thought, geez, it's Sinceri's first year. I don't know if I want my uh, new quarterback throwing the bad ball, but uh, I could understand what Baldwin won. Well, he hasn't thrown many bad footballs today. He's been on target, and he's done a nice job of being the leader at quarterback, and Baldwin's done a great job on the outside. Three catches for 71 yards, so Tino finding his big play receiver for some big yardage so far. Lewis gets the call. They keep it on the ground, and he's going to be stopped shy of the 40-yard line. Now coming up quickly, Jonathan Freeney, the senior defensive end from Tampa, Florida. Well, that was a nice job by Rutgers, Mike, closing up the hole quickly because it looked like there was a lot of running room for Dion Lewis, but Freeney and company were able to shut that down. Just a good job. Watch off the left side. Looks like a big hole off the left side, but a good job of pursuing to the football, and Freeney was one of the first guys there. And I apologize to Steve Boharness. He actually made the initial contact from his middle linebacker spot. Two of four on third down situations now for the uh, Pitt Panthers. Oh, that didn't take long. Sinceri goes down hard. That's the first sack by Rutgers. Only their sixth this season. Sack number 91, Justin Francis get his first sack. A loss of nine on the play. Yeah, and Joe Lefez comes in from that safety position on the blitz. He's going to come in from the outside. He's going to loop around here and come in and get the quarterback. Just a nice job of disguising where he was coming from. We thought today would be a difficult day for the O-line and fullback of recognition. Oh, and this one's blocked. The 47th time Rutgers has brought the kick since Greg Shano has taken over. And this one's going for the tying touchdown. Brandon Bing. Brandon Bing 
gets the touchdown. Remember the opener, he had two block kicks against Norfolk State. Well, that was one of the concerns from Dave Wanstead. He said, we need to block well on the punt team and get the football off. That time, Dan Hutchins had no chance. Rutgers coming through, overloading from the middle to the sideline and do a great job of coming off of the sack by LaFedge and now the block and recovery by Bing for the special teams touchdown. Was that 21 or 27, 27, John? 27, Wayne, Wayne Warren. Warren gets the block and a good job by Brandon Bing getting on the football for the special team score. 47 times they blocked the kick under Shiano and San San T on for the kick, which is good. And now with two minutes and 12 seconds to go, Dan Hutchins, the Big East Special Teams Player of the Week, averaged 47 on the year, doesn't get many blocks, but now we're tied up at 14 apiece. Sometimes this is a game of emotion, and the defense set up the special teams that time and put him in a position for Greg Schiano and that defensive and special team staff to dial up the block against the punter, Dan Hutchins. And that was a concern. You can see Dave Wanstead on the sideline talking about it. They're trying to float away from the pressure, but Wayne Warren gets in untouched. And then Brandon Bing, who has two blocks on the season, recovers the block punt for a touchdown. And that was a good job of keeping himself in the end zone and, and getting the football before it went out of bounds. That's a nice job of keeping his balance, but a good block by Wayne Warren setting up the touchdown. Another one of those young players for Greg Shiana. Warren only a sophomore out of Maryland. As we take a look at uh, Cameron Sadler now, he's back to receive the kick from San San T. San San T uh, revealing this week that his real name, after all these years, we find out it's Alessandro. But his sister, when she was little, all she could say was San San. You get all the good stuff. And that's where it stuck. And this one's going to be by Sadler. It gets by Graham, and it's all the way down to the one-yard line. Graham, nowhere to go. And he's going to be stopped shy of the 10. Good coverage by Rutgers. Inside Heinz Field is Pittsburgh, and Rutgers both try to get the 2-0 along with John Jemmy, Amy McEnany. I'm Mike Gleason. Great to have you with us as Rutgers, they believe. That's the operative word here today. They're tied up at 14. They're playing this game. They're dedicating this season. To their injured teammate Eric Legrand, who's back at the Hacking Sack a Medical Center after being injured against Army in the fourth quarter last week, suffering a severe spinal injury, and we certainly keep our fingers crossed. Our thought and prayers go out for Eric Legrand. That's Graham with the call over ten up to the eight-yard line. Bo Harness making another stop. Bo Harness on the stop. Time out. So with two minutes and one second to go, Rutgers now with uh, two timeouts remaining. Pittsburgh has all three here in the first half. Oh, yeah. so nice. well, it's going to be important for Tino Sinceri in this offense to move the football on this drive. As you said, Mike, Rutgers only wasting one timeout there. They have two remaining with just over two minutes to go before halftime. So Rutgers, Rutgers trying to get the football back to get a chance to score. Tied up at 14. We're back here next week uh, for all the Big East Network action on the 30th. The Louisville Cardinals flying into Heinz Field to take on these Pitt Panthers. It all gets underway next Saturday, October 30th, noon Eastern, only on the Big East Network. Second and five now for the Panthers. Graham dots the eye behind Hanoski. Wow! Nowhere to go. Big number 94, Scott Ballone, is in there. Quick as a cat. And there's going to be another timeout called. So Rutgers down to their final timeout as we move inside two minutes. Huge play by the Rutgers defense and confusion of recognition. You're going to see Pinkston, the left tackle for Pittsburgh. He just allows Scott Fallone to cross his face. And they were talking, the linemen amongst themselves. You got him, I got him, nobody has him. And Ray Graham <laughs> gets dumped for a loss on the play. Jonathan Freeney in the backfield as well. But Fallone was the first guy there. So the pit linemen still trying to figure out who had who. But it's a huge loss on second down. And now Rutgers taking that second time out maybe forcing Pittsburgh to punt the football again and bad memories of that block punt just a couple minutes ago yeah two minutes can be a long time if you're standing on one sideline and uh, for other coaches it's probably not enough time 
Dodd and Sinceri, the comparisons. Each have an INT. Sinceri with a touchdown pass. And Graham gets the call, bounces off the would-be tackler. Turns the corner. He's got some room. Spins. Over the 35-yard line. He fumbled the football. Rutgers say they have it. And so do the officials. And it's Rutgers' ball after Graham spins his way to a first down. The second turnover that they forced here so far. Steve Boharnas looked like he came up with the football and tried to toe tap his feet down to stay in bounds. First down. Rutgers. So you see the clock there, a minute 47 to go. Plenty of time for Chase Dodd go, guys. Put it up. to take the lead over Dave Wanstead now. Well, a great play by Graham. He, he eludes the tackle of Green, mm. but sometimes you do too much and you expose the football. Oh. It's punched out from behind by Lafege right into the arms of the linebacker, Boharnas. Yeah, Boharnas does a nice job, huh? Coming from Making behind, sure he's here's... Got that ball. Exactly, Mike. There's the strip from behind, and Boharnas keeps his feet in bounds and gets possession of the football. Knocked loose by number 26, Joe Lafege, who incidentally became the first Big East player in history to be named the Big East Defensive Player of the Week and the Special Teams Player of the Week the same week. What a heads-up play by the Rutgers defense, and they show you they, they were relentless around the football and he's been a playmaker all afternoon earlier in the season against FIU he had a monster game he had strip fumbles uh, two of them on the afternoon or in the evening then he had a tip pass he gets an interception he blocked a punt he was all over the field against FIU and today a big play before halftime against the Panthers there's the block punt Lefez doing an excellent job of getting the offense back on the field. Now Dodd trying to get his offense into the end zone. Dodd goes down. Four sacks now. That one's Brandon Lindsay. That's his sixth. So he and Jabal shared each with six, a loss of 10 on the play. Well, the Rutgers defense turned up the heat, and now against Greg Schiano, the pit defense, trying to make a big play for themselves with 133 remaining before halftime. Just good pressure by the Panthers and good speed shown by the defensive end there, Brandon Lindsay. And again, the Pittsburgh fans, in case you didn't hear me earlier, Greg Romeo is the defensive player of the year in the Big East last year. He has 19 and a half sacks. Went out after the uh, the back surgery. There he is right there. He's been practicing, and uh, Dave Wanstead said there's a pretty good chance if the doctors give him a thumbs up, he will play against Louisville next Saturday. Yeah, and play in a limited uh, package and possibly play a little bit more depending on what happens on Monday. So that's terrific news for Greg Romius, who has uh, aspirations of playing on Sunday, possibly in the stadium. <laughs> Little pump fake. Dodd fires. Sanu goes up and can't quite come down with it. He said he was interfered with. But then no penalty flag down. That's uh, number 25 for the, uh, the Pitt Panthers. Jason Hendricks, the Redshirt freshman safety. Yeah, and Ricky Gary also back there. It was funny when we were talking to Phil Bennett about the size of this Rutgers team outside at the wide receiver position, you know, 6'2, 6'3. And uh, they said, We're Smurfs. We got 5'9 guys, 5'10, but we're not playing basketball. We're playing football. And on that play, they challenged the receiver, Sanu, on the outside. Third and 20. Here comes the rush. Cheer. Fumble the football. Boy, Sheard came in charging with the bull rush. Had that big right arm knocked the ball loose out of Dodd's arm. That's five sacks now. Seven for Sheard. Rutgers recover the ball, but keep in mind it was third and 20 before that play started. It's just a big speed rush, as you said, the lower of the shoulder, and then Dodd gets hit stripped of the football. Underneath that pile, Rutgers comes away with it, but just a speed rush off the outside. Too much of a challenge for Art Forrest, the Time right out. tackle. Pittsburgh. But the Rutgers the fortunately gets the football Time out. underneath this pile, Mike. So number 97, Jabal Sheard. Came in with five sacks. He's got seven now. And Romeus uh, coming back. He had eight last year. And of course, uh, we mentioned the fact that Lindsay also was seven sacks on the year. But uh, Lindsay's probably getting a lot of 
more free roam because uh, Jabal Sheard, he's had double teams and chip blocks. He's seen it all this year. Well, last week we got a good uh, look at Jabal coming off the edge, and Syracuse had a plan for him. They chipped him with the backs. They double teamed him on the outside and tried to make Brandon Lindsay make plays on the other side. And that's what happens when you have Greg Romy is possibly getting back next week. Those two are going to be tough to tangle with. Delegato from the 30 yard line. This one went off the side of his foot, uh, hits at the 25, and Sadler's going to let it go. Panther fans wanted him to pick it up. Now, three times in that Notre Dame game, that he gave a valuable field position because he let it go, and then he redeemed himself at Syracuse, and the fans wanted him to pick it up. You're the coach. What do you think? Well, you want to get away right now because you don't want to make a, another bad play worse. And you have a minute, six seconds left to go. You're, you're fortunate your defense was able to come out and stop Rutgers with instant field position with the sacks they were able to get. So you don't want to go up and bobble the football again and give Rutgers another chance to get instant field position. So I think that was a good decision to get away. Wanstead's defense, five sacks, a forced fumble, and an INT. We're still in the first half. A 52-yard punt by Delegano puts the ball inside the 10-yard line. Nice hole for Dion. Still on his feet over the 20 yard line. Deion Lewis, the sophomore. Now he's starting to look like that guy that carried the ball last year. Well, you can see a little bit of the frustration in Deion Lewis as he runs over Joe LaFezz. He just lowers his shoulder and almost keeps his balance to go a lot further down the sideline. You yeah. can see the strength of Lewis running right over the defensive back and upset with himself that he could not keep his balance. Clock is winding. He picked up 12 in the last play. Lewis bounces off the two would-be tacklers up near the 28-yard line. Pittsburgh with one turn or one timeout remaining. Scott Malone making the stop. Now the Bluebirds are coming out as you see the clock down to 25-24, and now Pittsburgh finally stops it using their final timeout. But Pittsburgh fans feeling like they wasted too much time. Well, they were backed up inside the 10-yard line, and the good thing about this drive is. You're able to see the running power of Deion Lewis and being be able to set it up maybe for the second half that he's going to be able to get a little bit more of the workload because he can protect the football. You remember last year he had that string of runs. He hardly ever fumbled the football and he does a good job of protecting it. Now it's a, been a good combination with Ray Graham assisting Lewis but you hope that Lewis if you're a Pitt fan can get on track in the second half because he's running north and south and he's running over people and that's what you like to see that was shades of what he did last season he was able to jump cut in the hole then lower the shoulder lower the shoulder pads get that level low and run over people last year 1799 yards 17 rushing touchdowns and remember the run by Ray Graham before he fumbled there the spinning run and but that rem rem reminded me of that Notre Dame game last year where he broke off a 53 yard run so Graham and Lewis one and one a I guess street to the young receiver dropped the football over the 35 yard line and definitely should have had that one but the incomplete pass stops the clock with 19 seconds to go street wanting to get out of bounds and just lost the concentration on a perfectly thrown ball by Tino Sinceri that would have put the Panthers closer to the 40 yard line. Oh, don't forget coming up at halftime in Jimmy's corner as Ray Graham stops by we'll have the Big East breakdown as we take a look at a very very effective play by the pit offense and we'll have the first half highlights and stats it's been a very entertaining first half tied at 14. Kanoski gets the call over the 30 up to about the 34 yard line and that could be the final play now they're out of timeouts so the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers roll into Pittsburgh dedicating this game to season to Eric Legrand their teammate is back in New Jersey and Greg Schiano kept the team focused he said we'd be ready to go we'll be focused and it looks like they're focused they're playing some pretty good football they really did they came back after you know not scoring a lot of points early and they did a nice job of getting on the on the scoreboard first today let's head downstairs with Eamon McEnany standing by with Greg Schiano all right coach this week you said you weren't worried about your team's focus what were you what were, how would you describe your team's effort in that first half I think they're playing awfully hard uh, it's a good football team over there with some very explosive backs so our guys are, are working hard. We got to protect a little better. But, uh, you know, we're tough, tough group of people, and they're going to keep going. What adjustments do you make on the offensive end to protect better and get some time in the passing game? Well, we got to make sure we can take care of 97. He's a good rusher, but he's not the only one getting to us. So 
We're going to try to firm that up a little bit and come out here and, and try to score some more points. All right, Coach, thanks for the time. Good luck in the second half. Mike? Well, I mean, uh, Rutgers did score the first touchdown of the game, and then Pittsburgh had 14 uh, unanswered points, but Rutgers has come back to tie it up, even though Pittsburgh holds a commanding 242 to 93 lead in total yardage. They believe, they can believe, they can win this football game. They believe that Eric LeGrand will walk out on the football field once again. We're at halftime, tied at 14 inside Heinz Field. And when we come back, we'll have our Big East halftime report here from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. 14-14, Rutgers and Pitt deadlocked. is the score as Pitt and Rutgers all tied up at the half. Welcome to the Sprint Halftime Show. Jonas Schwartz alongside Don McPherson, Roman Oban, and obviously this game, one of the themes, Eric LeGrand. Rutgers and Pitt, both thinking of LeGrand, who of course for the moment is paralyzed from the neck down. Our thoughts and prayers are with him. We thought Rutgers may have trouble focusing coming into this game. Has not proved to be the case as he is again in the thoughts of both teams. He really is uh, clearly in the thoughts of both teams, but you have to give the Rutgers Scarlet Knights a lot of credit for keeping their, their minds and their, and, and their game focused on Pitt. They've played such a, a hard game so far. And, and so really, right off the bat, it looked as though Pitt was going to take it to Rutgers, but the Rutgers defense responds here. Charlie Noonan in the pick. Yeah, the pick, you look at this interception, not quite the uh, muscle to take all the way down, but he knew that Rutgers was ready to play defensively. I like the way he switched hands with the ball. Like a little <laughs> running back. He did look like a running back, as a matter of fact. And, of course, that would lead to a touchdown eventually here by Jersey Joe Martin getting around to the outside. So Rutgers, again, as we said, off to a good start. Big play showing the focus. Yeah, Martin right there showing the focus, getting the ball, bouncing it outside. As Roman says, a running back, once you go outside, you're on your own. You're on your own. And how about the special teams here? You know, special teams was one thing that's constant with a regret shot on the football team. There's going to be a block. There's going to be a special teams play. You see here the momentum. This is a huge momentum shifter for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. It's Wayne Warren with the block. Brandon Bing recovering for the touchdown. And then a little crazy play here towards the end of the half. As it looked like, I mean, what a run this looked like by Ray Graham. But then he gets a little careless with it on the sideline. Yeah, Ray Graham bounces outside. You want to see your running back try to get the extra yards. But here he's surrounded by a whole gang of Scarlet Nights, including Joel LaFedge, who pops the ball out for the, what a crazy, crazy kind of way to get the ball on a fumble. You look at this in and out by, a, he does on the defender, but you, you have to you have to have the football in your possession when you run out of bounds. It looked as though Rutgers had all the momentum at this point, but then Pitt's defense stiffened as well. It's a very competitive game. What's your thoughts of the first half? I think exactly that. It's a very competitive game. Both teams playing well defensively, making things happen. When you see those kind of plays on special teams, you like to see that because that means that your starters and your backup players are all getting their, their, their nose into the ball game. This is a this is a heavyweight championship bout right here. A lot of back and forth. I mean, you look at the meat of the season, talked about where teams are right now. The Big East is, is really balanced at this point in the year, but how both teams are playing, both teams are responding. Uh, no one's really leading out in the front. Uh, good play by both sides in the first half. Feels like it's going back and forth. Every time you think one team has the momentum, it shifts. Should make for a very interesting second half. Plenty of other action to get you caught up on when the Sprint Halftime Show returns. One other noon kickoff today. Oh, McPherson's loving it. Syracuse giving West Virginia all they can handle. Handle. Highlights from Morgantown on the way. Plus, UConn will play later today at Louisville. Roman loves that. And they'll be doing so without their starting quarterback. Roman loves that. The explanation <laughs> next on the Sprint Halftime Show when we come back. Jonas loves that. <laughs> and Rutgers score tied at 14. For right now, for Pitt, what do you think they need to do in the second half in order to start taking over this game? I think they need to get to keep their running back game going as it is, and I think they also need to start to establish a short passing game, opening up the deep ball. I think defensively, you know, what, what they're doing, obviously we'll go to this, but they need to keep putting pressure on B.J. James, but offensively, they need to keep making these type of plays. This game is going to start to settle. The score's even, but second half, I think Pitt's going to start to show that leadership and, and the confidence how they can go downfield and they can offensively for us. You, think the deep, you see the deep pass there, Jonathan Baldwin, now the running game. Doesn't seem like they're, you know, Baldwin seems to be an underutilized asset. For Baldwin really has not. That's why I talked about Tony Sinceri really not getting that vertical passing game going. They need to start to establish that vertical passing game. But I think that will happen from a strong running attack, but then also the short passing to the tight end and, and get we're working Baldwin in slowly. How about Chase Dodd? Now, he's always been so good in the fourth quarter. He's been, but in, in this game, a little erratic in the first half. What do you think of Chase Dodd going to I mean, the second half? This is a Chase Dodd. We haven't seen him get sacked five times and a half. Now, I don't care if you're a, a true freshman or a senior quarterback. 
you get sacked five times and a half, uh, it's going to affect the way you throw the ball. You see him connect the ball downfield. He's going to have to continue to make smart decisions. Hand the ball if he's supposed to hand it. You feel the pressure, dump it off to the back, go through your progression. He's got to continue to do that. Trust their running game. Uh, it's got to be. He's got to be more of a complete quarterback in the second half that we haven't seen in the first half. You know, I can look just at the way Chase Dodd is holding on to the football. It looks like he's holding on to the ball too long. Why he's getting sacked. He has also thrown it to coverage a couple of times. You can tell from that kind of behavior from a young quarterback that the defense is doing something in the secondary he doesn't understand. So give a lot of credit on the other side of the ball for Pitt for doing some disguising, doing some things that he hasn't seen, especially in the secondary. The rush is giving me a hard time, but the secondary is giving him a tougher time reading coverages. He needs a little poise right now. He's starting to look like a guy six months removed from his That's prom right. as opposed to the guy who you couldn't believe he was six months removed from his prom. So we have to see a little more poise from him in the second the half. The fact that he's done it in the fourth quarter before, is that weighing on his mind right now giving him confidence no question about it I know he knows he can go a full game and and and, and Rutgers knows that as well they got to keep him clean up front though you got to right. keep him clean. I have to keep him clean we'll see if there's more fourth quarter ma uh, magic I should say out of Chase Dodd 14-14 the second half beginning Rutgers Pittsburgh looking for a little supremacy in the conference can they get it done who will get it done we'll see in the post game the second half starts right now Welcome back to the Big East Network Game of the Week presented by PNC. Back in Heinz Field, the Rutgers and Pittsburgh all tied up at 14. Start of the third quarter. Getting ready to roll, and uh, let's go downstairs first and check in with Eamon. All right, Coach Wanstead, what was the theme in your locker room talk there at halftime? Oh, well, yeah, we, we uh, a block punt and, and two turnovers. You know, we're moving the ball, we're playing pretty good defense. I mean, uh, our guys emotionally have to rise up. And, uh, you know, when you look at the score, it's 14-14, and we've turned it over three times and, and give them a score on a block punt. Uh, we'll be fine. We protect the football and come out and just stay with the plan. We'll be fine. You were able to get to Dodd throughout that first half. What are you expecting adjustments from them? Well, uh, I mean, they're, they're keeping five and six guys in the block right now. They're keeping a the tight end in back half the time. So I don't know how much more protection they can give that way, but uh, I'm sure that'll be a, a topic for them, how to protect the passer and give them a chance to make some plays on the field. All right, Coach, thanks for the time. Good luck in the second half. Mike? Thanks, Eamon. And you take a look at it, uh, the block punt for the touchdown for Rutgers and for Pittsburgh, five sacks and a, almost a five yards uh, per play advantage, 154 of uh, total offense. You look at the discrepancies, you heard Dave Wanstead say, hey, if we just stick to the plan, we're going to be fine. What about the other side? Now, Rutgers will have the ball first. What do they have to do to move the chains? Well, I think they need to protect their young quarterback. That's the one, probably the one thing they need to take care of. That's paramount. But find some rhythm on offense. You've seen some of the big plays or the bigger plays that have been made is when Dodd's been able to get out of the pocket and keep plays alive. So the running game and protecting their quarterback will be vital to their success in the second half. Harper ready to kick off the sophomore from Mentor, Ohio. And the second half is uh, getting ready to start up as Rutgers scored first, came back to tie it up before halftime. And Mentor with that strong leg, go back to his high school days, he has a 61 and a 58 yard field goal. And uh, he is on scholarship. Uh, it's amazing uh, how good this kicking game is going to be in years to come. <laughs> that went out of the back of the end zone with ease. Yeah, you're right. That's a bright future for that young man. And one another bright future is wearing a red R or a red helmet with a white R. And that's uh, <laughs> Chase Dodd. He's going to have a, a good second half here because he's had a good second half. And especially in the fourth quarter, he's been rising to the occasion. It looks like he may give way to the Wildcat formation as Rutgers starts uh, to bring their offense out on the field. And you see the uh, comparisons between uh, Dodd and Sinceri. That's Deering, the true freshman in the Wildcat right now. Jordan Thomas is in the, uh, the backfield. So two, two freshmen. And Deering gets the call over the 25 up to the 27. Yeah, Deering, 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 Deering. A gain of seven. You know, again, we go back to Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator, how interesting it was watching him uh, break down the Wildcat, uh, looking at it from a defensive point. And I understand that obviously the Wildcat gives you one extra blocker, but uh, it, it's amazing how much success teams have with this. Now, remember when this team, Rutgers, went down to FIU and they were struggling when Savage had right. the interceptions and had the sacks. What did they do in the second half? They went to the Wildcat with Sanu, and they were able to control the line of scrimmage. Greg Schiano may be thinking along those lines in, in Pittsburgh today. Yes, to do. Nursing that sore foot. This is the freshman. He's got some running room up over the 40 yard line. And he puts the ball down on the carpet. Jordan Thomas 
another big gainer and another fumble, and Pittsburgh has the ball. Max Gruder, the middle linebacker. He has a forced fumble, and now he has his first fumble recovery. Well, Rutgers was doing exactly what they wanted to do, but a big hit by Jared Hawley. The free safety comes up, and Gruder on the bottom of that pile. This is just a helmet right on the football, mm. and the ball squirts out, and Gruder's able to get on the football in instant field position for the Panther offense. And the Panthers open up the second half, uh, showing the I formation. That's number one, Graham, behind Hanoski. And he gets the call. It's the left side and goes down quickly as he crosses the, the line of scrimmage. And we've seen some good running, but uh, Rutgers has been tough up front as well. So Sinceri coming off that big game where he hit 71%, four touchdowns in Syracuse, 157 yards through the air in the first half. I thought it was interesting, John, how the coaching staff said, you know what, he's making progress, he's getting better. But we don't want him to get ahead of himself now. <laughs> yeah, they were very cognizant yeah. of that uh, of that issue yesterday when they talked with us. Confidence is good, but you don't want too much confidence. Just keep learning the game. Sinceri wants to throw it. Plenty of time over the middle. Has his man inside the 40. It's complete. It's Hanoski again. Out of the backfield. Lowry drags him down. A gain of six. Hanoski, the leading receiver for the Panthers at halftime, make it five catches now for 26 yards. And he's done a nice job of blocking for the running game and catching the football out of the backfield. And that's a, a, a very versatile guy you have at the fullback position. When you can block, you can go out and catch passes, you can run the football. It gives you a lot of options that when you're a young quarterback like Tino Sinceri has right now on third and short. Third and three, Baldwin and Shanahan both out of the ball game. Devin Street, the lone receiver, the bottom of your screen, and Graham's going to be shy of the first down. An interesting situation now. Glad uh, the sophomore linebacker making his first start, so makes the stop. And now you have a fourth down. You're tied at 14. You're down, uh, knocking on the door. Well, not that far, 11 yards from the red zone. What do you do? Well, you're going for it. I think they ran the football effectively on third down or tried to, knowing that they had two downs to pick up three yards. So right now, the Panthers, no hesitation going for it on fourth down. They're three for eight on the season. Only school that hasn't given up a fourth down is Rutgers. Now we'll see if that, that holds true here. Wow. And that's the first fourth down conversion Rutgers has given up and a great play call by Frank Signetti and Hanoski picks up 20. Let me ask you this John do you think with those three bus loads coming in do you think the uh, the, the coaches purposely put him in the game plan because he's having a big game. Well you're going to get pressure on the outside you may have but this is great awareness by the quarterback Tino Sinceri. He's going to get pressure right after the play fake but he anticipates that because he knew there was eight or nine people really close to the line of scrimmage so Hanoski gets to show off in front of his family and fans uh, coming from his hometown. Six catches 46 yards for Hanoski as Graham tries to break to the outside get stopped just shy of the 10 yard line. Steve Boharness the middle linebacker making the stop a gain of four. Boharness uh, coming in with 40 tackles that's four more than he had all of last year in 2009. Greg Schiano. Well if you're Greg Schiano right here Mike you have to pay attention to Mike Cruz the tight end. He was the one that burned him on this exact spot on the field in the first half going to the back of the end zone. Second down for the Panthers. Ball resting just outside the 10 yard line. Play action. Sinceri lobs it up. And it's another touchdown pass. And again, it's number 85, Mike Cruz. That's his second of the ball game, second of his pit career. Yeah, that's the exact play they ran in the first half. And that's what we were just talking about. You have to pay attention to the tight end, exact same spot on the field. And they go back to the well. Frank Signetti dials up the same play after the play action. And this is a better throw than the first one. This was perfect. Tino dropped it in the bucket to his big tight end in the back of the end zone. Dino Sinceri now 11 touchdowns through the air. Cruz uh, 2 for 14. Both catches are touchdowns here today. Dan Hutchins drills it through as he usually does. 
And Pittsburgh takes the football, and Dave Wonset said if we stick to the plan, we're going to be okay. We'll see. Siri sticking to the plan right here, Mike. After the play action, he finds Mike Cruz for his second touchdown of the afternoon. Need a better way to save for the things you want? Meet PNC Virtual Wallet. It comes with a wish list that helps you set aside money for the stuff that really matters. Just put the things you want on your wish list and contribute money when you feel like it. Then watch as you get closer to getting what you want. Wish list is built to make saving a whole lot more fun. Experience all the ways Virtual Wallet can help you save at pncvirtualwallet.com. PNC, for the achiever in us all. I know belts and hoses, not X and noses. I do O2 sensors, but not defenses. Yeah, I make a right call to keep your car in the game. Don't even need a playbook, it's all in my brain. Fuel injectors, alternators, radiators too. It's who I am, it's what I do. Never know how. How are those flat rate boxes working out? Fabulous. They give me this great idea. Yeah? We mail documents all over the country. So what if there were priority mail flat rate envelopes? On... Yes. You could ship to any state. For a low flat rate? Yes. A really low flat rate. Like $4.90. Yes. It could look like a flat rate box. Only flatter. Like this? You. Me. Genius. Genius. <laughs> Priority mail flat rate envelopes. Just $4.90. Only from the Postal Service. A simpler way to ship. You've never seen fast. You've never held it in your hand and unleashed it with a fingertip. Never watched pixels whip by at one gigahertz and had your neurons struggle to keep up. You've never seen fast because you've never seen this. The Droid Incredible by HTC. It's nothing short of its name. Buy a Droid Incredible with Flash and get any phone free. What do you ladies got there? What is apple pecan chicken salad and a baked potato? A BLT cob and a chili. For one price, you can pick two things. What do you got? This. Oh, only one thing? I have something else. of seven tasty options for just $4.99. You know when it's real. Back in Pittsburgh, number 85, Mike Cruz, the uh, tight end with two catches, both touchdowns. And Pittsburgh goes 43 yards in six plays and 316 as they stick to the plan, as Dave Wonstead says. And it's 21 to 14 now. The Pitt Panthers back on top of the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Kevin Harper back to kick it again. His last kickoff went out of the end zone. And Jordan Thomas back to receive the kick. Pittsburgh coming in averaging about 28 and a half points a game. They averaged 32 last year. Just one of three seasons in the history of Pitt football that they scored over 30 points a game. And here's another good kick. And this one's going to be taken about a yard from going out of the end zone again. All right, John, let's take a look at the Napa know-how that went into that touchdown pass to Cruz. It's a nice call by Frank Signetti. You're going to see the tight end line up on the field side and then motion down to this position right here. But as he does, the free safety gets too far to the middle of the field. Now, they're going to ask the tight, the tight end to go man-to-man -man against the defensive end in Jonathan Freeney. That's just a mismatch that Tino Sinceri was able to take advantage of. There's no way that that defensive end is going to keep up with the tight end because he's not used to getting in and out of routes. Advantage Panthers an advantage on the scoreboard as well. Jeremy Deering uh, back in the backfield out of that Wildcat again for Greg Schiano's offense. Goes left and finds some running room to the right. Tries to turn the corner. Almost does it. It's up to the 25. Ricky Gary finally makes the stop and he picks up five on the play. Deering the true freshman came in averaging 21 yards a catch. And he's doing a pretty good job with that Wildcat. Of course, Mohamed Sanu might be the best in this league at running that. Sanu up for the Paul Horning Award this year for the most versatile player. There's number six, Mohamed Sanu. 
As Dodd comes back on the field, they keep it on the ground. A little misdirection play, and Rutgers does a nice job of uh, rumbling down. It's Joe Marknick picks up 12. Well, Mike, you can see the Rutgers plan at halftime. They're going to try to run the football and slow that pass rush down for the young quarterback. Put more pressure on the running game and see if they can get this football game into the fourth quarter where they've had success opening up the playbook. Well, we talked about that game last night. How about Morgantown, West Virginia? They're five and one right now. They're trailing Syracuse. Wow. 1914. That game is in the second half, in the third quarter in Morgantown. Martinick stops, nowhere to go, and he's smothered right at the 35-yard line. Right now, our AT&T All-America Player of the Week, uh, and this happened last night. B.J. Daniels, 13 of 16, 286, and a couple of touchdowns, no picks, and that had to be big for his confidence. You were just waiting for B.J. Daniels to explode against somebody, and he did last night in Cincinnati. Two rushing touchdowns, two throwing touchdowns. He was awesome. Text vote to 345-345 for your mobile phone to vote and chance at a trip to the national championship game. Hey, number 97, Shear just chased down the running back, uh, Jordan Thomas. Boy, number 97 has been all over this football field. 6'4", 260. You know, John, a lot of people talk about uh, his arrest over the summer when he got into a little brawl. But uh, keep in mind, here's a young man who actually saved an elderly woman from a burning house back in his high school football days. I got to speak with him at the Big East Media Day. What a nice guy uh, he is and, and a good leader for this Panther team. Big third down play now for Dodd. Feeling the pressure, tries to leave the pocket, but no, he's going down. And again, it's number 35. If it's not number 97, it's 35. Brandon Lindsay gets another sack. Brandon Lindsay comes from the wide side of the field, and boy, he has a good motor because Dodd can move in that offensive backfield, but Lindsay was able to be relentless pursuing the young quarterback and celebrating with his coach Greg Catuso on the sidelines. Lindsay now with three sacks. They came in with 14 as a team, and now they have 20. Six sacks in the ball game. Delagana back on to punts. He has a 54-yarder and a 52-yarder. This one goes out of bounds right at the midfield strike. This one only goes 25 yards. Defense wins championships, and that's what Dave Wanstead's hoping for. Next week, he could have Greg Romeus back, but right now, Lindsey with his third sack of the day. I'm feeling paranoid. I'm so destroyed. I'm Visit Overstock.com to help you find your next home. Just check out our real estate section and find not only a house, but great ways to save money on your closing fees and more. We've done the hard part. Now go have some fun. Overstock.com, your place for real estate. An accident doesn't have to slow you down. From new car replacement and guaranteed repairs to 24-hour claims assistance, we do all we can to help you move on. Liberty Mutual Auto Insurance. Responsibility. What's your policy? Polaris is having a factory authorized clearance, which means you can get financing as low as 3.99% and up to $1,200 in rebates on vehicles like the Ranger Razor or the Sportsman XP or the Ranger XP. That's financing as low as 3.99% and up to $1,200 in rebates. Hey, it's all about the deal. That's all you need to know, right? All deal, no hype. The Polaris factory authorized clearance. Going on now. Find your next car purchase online. At Overstock.com Cars, you can shop knowing there's a new car low price guarantee, haggle-free pricing, and guaranteed price quotes. Save money when you need it most. Overstock.com Cars, your virtual car dealer. The 3 Series exemplifies the essence of BMW. It has the ingredients of the perfect sports sedan. Everything is balanced, everything works in harmony, everything is perfectly engineered. That's why car and driver staff buy this car more than any other.
Get 0.9% financing, or for the first time ever, pay nothing down on a well-equipped 2011 BMW 3 Series sedan. Third quarter in Pittsburgh, 21-14. Pittsburgh on top as we go downstairs and check in with Eamon. Well, Mike, obviously today Rutgers playing in honor of junior Eric Legrand, their teammate who suffered a serious spinal injury last week against Army. Earlier today I had a chance to ask Coach Greg Schiano about the long and challenging week for him and his players. How would you describe the emotional steps taken by your players from last Saturday to now as they get ready to return to the field? Well, it's been quite a quite a path you know um, I've never been through something like this and uh, neither of our players but uh, what we've tried to do is stay focused on the things we can control and uh, really our prayers are the most important thing for Eric and that's what I've told our team. Coach today there's going to be a banner signed by Pittsburgh students in support of Eric across the state of New Jersey this weekend high school players wearing the number 52 sticker on their helmet. What has this support meant for Eric his family and you and your program. Well, I think it means it means a lot. I know it does to Eric and his family and you know it's unfortunate that it takes something like this to galvanize a group of people but uh, you know I can't tell you the amount of support we've had from our our league brethren here in the Big East and across the country it uh, it affirms to me what what athletics is about coach thanks for the time good luck today against Pittsburgh thank you Andy. and Mike the mantra for coach Shano and the Scarlet Knights one word believe it is on their helmets and Mike they believe Eric Legrand will walk again Eamon, as you pointed out in the first half, Dave Wanstead uh, with that compliment, the ultimate compliment, that there's one guy who will handle the situation correctly, it's Greg Schiano. Greg Schiano keeping the team focused. Uh, Eric Legrand uh, back at the Hackensack University Medical Center. And these plays, these players playing every play with Legrand in the back of their minds. Deion Lewis breaks to the outside, had to get to the 40, and that's exactly where he got. It's almost like he sniffed out that first yard marker. Now you can tell today that the running game from Deion Lewis is closer to being back than it was even last oh, week and, and earlier in the season. He has that extra burst, and he's getting to the edge with quickness. He said a couple of weeks ago that he noticed that uh, Graham was hitting the hard Hitting the hole harder than he was with more aggression, and uh, he's been trying to do that the last couple of weeks. And as you uh, pointed out, it's starting to all come together for him. Antonio Lowry, number 50, young man, number one in the Big East, averaging 10.8 tackles per game, 19 tackles against Army. And Greg Chiano says, as long as he's been a head coach, he hasn't seen a performance like that. And that was unbelievable what Antonio Lowry was able to do. 19 total tackles, as you said, against Army, and. You know it, it's something for a head coach especially a defensive coach and Greg Schiano that's where his background is and and he can coach defense he can put pressure on the pocket and he likes guys that can move around and Lowry is one of them. Antonio Lowry walks off the field under his own power which is uh, good news. And let's take a look at our good hands play of the game. Well, this was a huge play in the first half by John Baldwin. He has that left arm kind of taken away from him from David Rowe or by David Rowe and Baldwin the one handed catch on the outside. And it was a perfect pass from Tino Sinceri. Speaking of passing speaking of Sinceri he completes another one to Hanoski. And he's down inside the 35 yard line. That good hands play of the day was brought to you by Allstate. Six more for Hanoski, and uh, he's having a big game. He's having a nice game, and he's doing a good job of catching the football out of the backfield. I don't know how many times. That might be the sixth reception for Hanoski on the afternoon. He's done a nice job of securing the football, protecting it. Seven, excuse me, seven catches this afternoon. Second and four for the Panthers. Lewis. By Lewis, what is he? 5'8. He hits that line. Looks like he's going down. All of a sudden, he bounces and he's still on his feet. And uh, where he hit the line of scrimmage, uh, there's guys still scuffling around, but uh, number 28's not there anymore. And that was a nice job by Lewis of just taking what was there. There wasn't a big hole for him to run through, but he was able to just stay tough in between the tackles, throw his body into the mix, and really get close to that first down marker. He's a tough downhill runner, and he's determined today to get it back. Well, his mother, Linda, said uh, he's been playing flag football since the age of five, and if you wanted to score, you gave the ball to Dion. You know, at Blair Academy, average over 12 yards a carry at 4-4-3 speed, good grades, and 
Dave Wanstead was just shocked that nobody picked him up or at least recruited him harder saying hey what is this kid uh, does he have a one point GPA or is he in trouble <laughs> the law. Uh, no on both accounts and uh, last year rushed for seventeen hundred ninety nine yards. Well, he had a spectacular year last year and made everybody talk to, about him about the Heisman Trophy in, in this year and it, it's really all about team when you talk to Dion Lewis he just wants to be successful and he wants his team to be successful and you can't have a better attitude than that. Panthers three for eight on third downs this afternoon they came into the game thirty seven percent. Well it looked like some movement right before the snap they're going to have the first down there's no penalty flags drop. Boy, if timing is everything. It looked like that right side of the line moved right before the snapper, right at the snap. It looked like Lucas Nix, that right guard, may have got an early jump, but didn't get caught. And the Panthers get a first down. Sinceri now with 11 touchdowns, four INTs. He has two touchdowns here this afternoon after throwing four. Our first and 10 line is brought to you by Overstock.com. 540 to go quarter number three 21 to 14 Pittsburgh on top by a touchdown over the Scarlet Knights. That's Hanoski the big fullback in motion. Sinceri comes up firing. Baldwin with another one handed catch. His second of the day. He's feeling it. Is this guy special or what Mike. That's huge. He goes up and climbs the ladder. Again, that right hand just snags the football out of the air. Just a terrific job by John Baldwin on the outside, a corner route from the slot position. Look at that right hand go up and take it away from two defenders. Picked up 23 on the play. Inside the five. Lewis bouncing. They belong, drags him down. Along with Glaude and Freeney. Another look at the catch, John. Yeah, he's in the slot. Is Baldwin. He's just going to run a corner round. This is a good ball by Tino, but a better catch right in front of Kasim Green and David Rowe. Wow, that was unbelievable. We may have to go back and redo the All-State good hands play. Just a terrific effort. Four receptions, 93 yards on the afternoon. I don't need my left arm. I'll just <laughs> use my right. It's still pulling. 100 yards receiving and a sincerity. Cruz thought he'd try the same. <laughs> Not the same success. Cruz already, uh, that could have been his third touchdown. He'd like to have that one back, I think. Boy, and so would Dave Wanstead and offensive coordinator Frank Signetti. That play was drawn up perfectly, and they had the big tight end again. But just the timing, you could tell, was not there right from the start. Just the, the, the tight end placement in the back of the end zone wasn't there. Tino wasn't ready to throw when the tight end was open. So now the Panthers, another shot at the end zone on third down. Third and goal. Lewis is close to the goal line. No indication he's going to be just shy. Ballone makes the stop, and it's fourth and goal. Decision time for Dave Wanstead. Take the points or go for the touchdown. They're going to take the points. Well, it all comes back. You can't really worry about third down because they had the easy opportunity to score on second down. That's the play that hurt the series inside the five yard line. It wasn't first down. It wasn't third down. You miss an opportunity to score on, with your tight end wide open. And uh, you, don't, you hope it doesn't come back to haunt you later in the fourth quarter. Hutchins, he's 10 of 14 on the year. This one. Put down at the eight yard line. It's an 18 yarder. Eleven for fifteen on the year. Three more points on the board for the Pitt Panthers. Jonathan Baldwin with another big play that sets up points for the Panthers. He's made one. No, he's made two one-handed catches on the afternoon. Looking for a complete picture of your money? Meet PNC Virtual Wallet. It comes with a money bar that shows what's scheduled to go out, what you've put aside, and how much you really have available right now to spend on the things you want. And you can free up money with a simple slide. It's built to help make your financial life a whole lot easier. Experience everything Virtual Wallet has to offer at pncvirtualwallet.com. PNC, for the achiever in us all. It's time for the Bud Light Playbook. Today, how to make the ultimate tailgate car. Hey, man, come on. You run out of gas? Actually, there is no gas tank. 
Behold, the ultimate tailgate car. I replaced the gas tank with a gag of Bud Light. Here we go. The heater doubles as a popcorn popper. Since we don't have gas, we don't need an engine. Your grill is a grill. There's no junk in that trunk. Bud Light, the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Let's go. No matter what your pace is, you can get away, while away, hide away, break away, trade winds, island, Lisa. Just let go. Oh. For great Florida rates, visit JustLetGo.com. Just let go. I'm Linda McMahon, and I approve this message. Dick Blumenthal lied about Linda McMahon's position on the minimum wage, about Social Security, Canadian fundraisers, and Vietnam. But now, we've learned his biggest lie yet. He said his countrywide mortgage settlement wouldn't cost taxpayers a dime. Turns out it did. At retiree pension funds, too, $8.6 billion. Dick Blumenthal took care of Countrywide and raided retirees' pensions. Another Blumenthal lie. The following Big East Network game is brought to you in stunning high definition. Beautiful day in Pittsburgh, and uh, right now the Panthers on top by 10, 24-14. Let's go back and take a look at John Baldwin and that catch brought to you by Wendy's in real time. Well, he's made some exciting catches today, Mike, and none better than this one. Another one-handed grab on the corner route. In between two Rutgers defenders, this is just terrific concentration and going up and getting the football at its highest point. Just a great job of climbing the ladder and going up and securing the football inside the five-yard line. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. Frank Signetti says, I don't care who you are, if you're not running the right routes and earning that trust by your quarterback. And again, last week, only one catch for 61. It seems like that trust has, uh, has come around again. It's creeping its way back into the offense. That's right. Harper with another good kick. This time, Rutgers will return it. Stumbling over the 10-yard uh, line. It's Joe Lefebvre, number 26. 26 Joe and he thought he saw a lane. He tried to veer to the left, and he stumbled. So they'll start from inside the 20-yard line. Key play, that catch by Baldwin, the one-handed stab. Nine plays, 49 yards, 404. And the field goal by Dan Hutchins, uh, his 11th this year. It'll be interesting to see what Rutgers tries to do now, down 24-14. It looked like the plan at halftime was to come out and run a little bit more Wildcat and run the football. But as you see with the ball backed up on the 15, Dodd is back at quarterback. Looks, turns, fires, knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Chaz Alexi. The redshirt junior from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. He goes 6'5", 280, and he, uh, he just got those big arms up. Pittsburgh does a good job up front, don't they, as far as... Not, I mean, obviously, they got a ton of sacks today, but everybody gets their arms up. They've been doing a good job against this Rutgers offense in front of, of collapsing the pocket and, and taking away the throwing lanes from a quarterback that's not 6'3 or 6'4, so it's making it very difficult for Dodd to get those lanes and get those easy throws down the field. Six sacks for the Panthers. Uh, they have 29 the year. Led the nation with 47 last year. Jeremy Deering and the Wildcat gets the snap goes. Uh, Max Gruder, number 55, is there to meet him at the line of scrimmage. Along with Antoine Reed coming up from the corner. Gain of two on the play. Greg Schiano, the 2006 National Coach of the Year. Four and five. All time against Pittsburgh. Built that program from scratch. And right now he's two games over 500 here in his 10th year. Well, a huge play here, Mike, on third down for the young quarterback backed up behind the 20-yard line. Dive. Fires. Looking for Durham. And it's incomplete. Uh, Ricky Gary on the coverage for Pittsburgh. You know, it's funny watching Dodd that time. You're talking about collapsing the pocket. He has a lot of poise, but I swear you can feel it. As soon as he dropped back this time, he knew there were going to be a lot of Panthers. Yeah, after a while, you know, it gets uh, to be 
tough as a quarterback to be able to put the blinders on after you've been sacked multiple times to let that pressure get by you and step up into the pocket and make a positive throw, an accurate throw. That time, the combination of good coverage and good pressure got to the young quarterback. Delegano spunts. Hit just over the midfield stripe, and it's going to take a Pittsburgh bounce. It looked like the Scarlet Banks actually batted it the other way. 30-yard punt. Now, Pitt basketball fans uh, catch the Panthers as they compete in a doubleheader featuring Auburn, Rutgers, and Tennessee in the Direct TV SEC Big East Invitational December 11th at the Consul Energy Center here in Pittsburgh. For tickets and more information, visit www.secbigeastinvitational.com. We look at the uh, Big East preseason coaches poll. Uh, Pittsburgh picked number one. Uh, Jamie Dixon, they were picked ninth last year. And I don't think anyone will ever pick Pittsburgh ninth again, but Pittsburgh and Jamie Dixon, uh, one of the top coaches in all of America and uh, Jay Wright right behind there at number two in the preseason. Big East basketball is a number one conference in all the land. Graham, look at that spin, huh? Last time he fumbled, but uh, boy, he's fun to watch. You know, Signetti talking about how good Deion Lewis is. He said, you know, Graham, because he can catch the ball so well, he's tough to take him off the field. And he creates mismatches on the outside. When you can get him in space, he can break the first two arm tackles and still get downfield and get positive yardage. So offensive coordinator Frank Signetti likes to use him out of the backfield because he creates mismatches on linebackers, but he'll put him and split him out wide and throw him that screenplay too. There's Graham. Boy, he had an opening. Uh, he was stopped just over the line of scrimmage. Bull Harness finally put him down, but uh, somebody up front got their big hand. Uh, I think it was Khalil Gallad. The linebacker coming up to make the stop in his uh, first start. You know, Manny Abreu, Greg Shiano was saying he was playing his best football. The last three games of 19 tackles. He's out with a knee. Of course, Eric Legrand is back in New Jersey after suffering that uh, serious injury last week against the Army. So, Injuries have depleted the core somewhat, but uh, they're hanging tough right now. Down 10, though. But keep in mind, they get that fourth quarter. That's where they do all their scoring. Sinceri. Oh, I'll tell you. This one's complete to streets. A gain of 10. And the DB thought he might have had a pick six there, number 23. That's a Brandon Bing. Well, there's the trust factor coming in from quarterback to wide receiver because that's a nine-yard stop route. And on the outside, Devin Street has to come in and out of that route quickly because Brandon Bing should have been going the other way. That ball was thrown to the inside, and Tino Sinceri got away with one there, but uh, that looked like it had a chance to go about 85 yards the other way. Well, you know, Bing's thinking, go ahead, Tino, try that one again. This time I'll pick it and take it back for six. Sincerely, play action, plenty of room. Baldwin just beyond his outstretched hands. Nice job of keeping his feet in, but uh, the ball was thrown a little bit too much to the outside, so it falls incomplete, and Sincerely almost had another touchdown pass. Yeah, it looked like uh, if, if you had that play over again, and I'm sure when Tino watches this tomorrow, he's going to want to maybe tuck the football and just get five or six or seven yards so you're in a better situation because uh, he was trying to buy some time to let Baldwin get open on the outside, and he just couldn't fit it in there. The afternoon numbers on Sincerely are awesome. 19 of 25 for 249, two touchdowns and only one interception. Another play action. But well, they've been running that play action a lot. Every time he rolls out, good coverage. Couldn't find an open receiver, but they roll Sinceri uh, out to the right, and he's got plenty of room out there. Well, Tino didn't have to wait for tomorrow to watch it. They just ran the play over again, and he makes a good decision that time. And had he done that on the second down play, they would have a first down now. So it's a good learning curve for Frank Signetti to teach his young quarterback, you know what, we're going to come right back to it because Rutgers, the defense, gave it to us on, uh, on first down. They may give it to us on second down as well. Picks up eight, so it's third and two. They're four for ten on third downs so far this afternoon. Graham gets the call, and he's going to go backwards. And a fumble! It's recovered by Pittsburgh, but uh, there were a lot of white jerseys around, and the ball was knocked loose. Sinoski, not only is he catching football, having a big game offensively, but he was Johnny on the spot there. And we played. 
Three quarters of football, loss of seven on the play. Dave wants to down the back of his mind, knowing that Rutgers has done some damage in the fourth quarter. They really have, and that's a huge defensive stand for Rutgers to keep Pittsburgh out of the end zone on third down. 24-14 of Pittsburgh, of Rutgers. They've outscored the opposition 40-3 to in the fourth. We'll see what transpires here. Oh, wow. Honda EU Series generators are perfect for hardcore tailgaters. They provide reliable power for all sorts of things, and they're incredibly quiet. Uh -oh. I got this one. Which neighbors really appreciate. Honda generators. Bring it. 58 different individuals are using absolutely using my old social security number. My credit score just went out the window. Identity theft can be devastating. That's why LifeLock is proactive protection, working to help stop identity theft before it happens. And the biggest difference is stopping it before it starts. LifeLock's exclusive identity alert system goes beyond mere credit monitoring, which only alerts you after the theft. With LifeLock, it's like having a digital fingerprint. If a new application doesn't match you, we send an alert. And if needed, we help fix the identity theft. Don't wait another minute. Call now. Go with the industry leader. Join LifeLock and get alerts to important information. A $1 million service guarantee, plus a team of identity theft protection specialists. Enroll now and get 10% off your enrollment for you and your entire family with today's special offer. Call today and mention ID Alert or go to LifeLock.com. Want your small business to get access to big discounts for free? If you're an Optimum Business customer, get ready to save. Just visit OptimumBusiness.com slash enroll. Sign up for Optimum Business Benefits and start saving on all kinds of small business services like up to 20% off shipping and up to 50% off credit card processing. Click your way to saving today. Activate your free membership. It's fast and easy. Now even small businesses can get big discounts. What is this place, Tower Prep? Most of us are what you call special. This program prepares them to deal with the outside world and with each other. Is this a test? Gotta think fast as who your friends are. Can I get a break for it? I'm in. This way. Watch Tower Prep Tuesdays on Cartoon Network. Brought to you locally by Raymore and Flanagan Furniture. Knights of Rutgers dedicating this game this season. Eric Legrand, the junior defensive tackle, suffering that serious spinal injury last week while making a tackle on the kickoff late in the fourth quarter. And right now they open the fourth quarter where they've outscored the opposition 40 to 3. But Dan Hutchins is on to try a 34 yard field goal. If he makes it, it'll be his second of the ball game. And boy, he got that one to hook right in. That was very timely, and you can't you have to credit the Rutgers defense. The last two pit drives, although they've given up six points, they've kept the Panthers out of the end zone, and it still keeps them in this football game. Well, that's a great point. So, so now Dan Hutchins, uh, who averaged uh, 50 yards a punt last week on five punts, has a couple of field goals. He's 12 of 16 on the year. So 10 points in the third quarter, but again, we're in the fourth quarter, and this is the quarter that Rutgers has dominated. Just the yardage on this game summary pit plus 245 in total yard advantage and Sinceri having a terrific afternoon two touchdowns to his tight end and just one yard shy of 250 and that makes Panther fans young and old very happy. That averaging 366 yards of uh, total offense on the year and Greg Schiano's offense uh, he knows they're young. He says they're getting better, coming in averaging only 21 points. 
and uh, total yards about 316. 111 on the ground though ranks eighth in the Big East. And one of those things, Mike, uh, offensively, only 125 total yards for their offense, and this has been the quarter that they've been able to generate those total yards. Pitt at 370, so right now it's been a dominating performance in yards, but not really on the scoreboard. Dominating showing again by Harper as he puts him in the end zone, and Lefebvre brings it out, 20-25, just shy of the 30-yard line. A nice return by Lefebvre, 29-yard return. So Pittsburgh now we'll see with Phil Bennett's defense. As Phil Bennett brought up in our meeting, they trailed 17 to 3 to start the fourth quarter, won that game in overtime against Army at the Meadowlands. Chase Dodd, the young quarterback from South Carolina, he's won his two starts, both with fourth quarter comebacks. Well, Rutgers has made a fourth quarter comeback in all three of the four games that they have won this year, or in three of the four games they've won this year against FIU, UConn, and Army. Today's first and ten line is brought to you by Overstock.com. First play from scrimmage, fourth quarter, and look who's at the Wildcat. Mostly it's been Deering, and now Mohamed Sanu gets the snap, run out of bounds. Sanu, of course, as John mentioned, was in a boot earlier this week in practice. Uh, he's had a foot problem. And Greg Schiano said sometimes the pain can be uh, so much that he simply can't play. Yeah, and they've saved him for this Wildcat into the fourth quarter. And remember yesterday when we were visiting with defensive coordinator Phil Bennett, he was very happy with the Panthers defensively last week in the first half against Syracuse. Second half, not so happy. Let's see how if they can turn up the heat uh, in the fourth quarter today. Here comes number 97. Dodd gets it off and completes the ball. Penalty flag dropped back in the backfield. Dodd stepped up nicely Holding. to complete it. Offense, number 77. 10-yard penalty, second down. It's coming back, Art Forrest, the junior, out of New Jersey, the right tackle. Caught for holding. That was great pressure put on in that offensive backfield by Sheard, number 97. There's the hold right there on, on Forrest, 77 in white, and then the hit to the young quarterback after he releases the football by a young player himself and Aaron Donald from Pittsburgh, the freshman. True freshman out of Penn Hills. Scarlet Knights had given up 26 sacks coming into the ball game. Eight last week to Army, six so far here to Pittsburgh. Aaron Donald almost had number seven. Dodd steps up, goes deep, and this one's going to fall incomplete. Harrison, the intended receiver, good coverage uh, by the Panthers that time. And Buddy Jackson was step for step with Harrison. Good coverage from Buddy Jackson, the junior out of Plantation, Florida, in Cypress Bay High School. Trying to go to Mark Harrison on the outside, who Greg Schiano says is going to be a, a playmaker for him in, in years to come. Only a sophomore, and he's starting to get that big play ability and talent. But right now, the Panthers doing the job with a big third down conversion here for the young quarterback, Chase Dodd, who's been trying to make big plays in the fourth quarter. Well, look at that rush. Dodd has missed on his last six. Now make it seven as he gets pushed out of bounds. So that Pittsburgh defense, you know, we talk about the offense and Sinceri's progression, but that defense, they've really put on the pressure here today. Well, it all starts up front for this defense. The front seven have done an excellent job of pressuring the young quarterback, Dodd, and sacking him and hitting him, bringing him to the ground. And he's going to be a sore quarterback tomorrow because the Panthers' front seven have done their job today. Delegano from the 10. Sadler backs up inside the 35. Sadler gets it at the 35. Cuts it back up over the 45 and dropped at the 47-yard line. A 45-yard punt. 12-yard return by Cameron Sadler. We're going to take a timeout. 13.25 to go. 27-14 pit on top. Looking for a complete picture of your money? Meet PNC Virtual Wallet. It comes with a calendar that shows you all your finances at once. It lets you know when your money's going out and when it's coming in. It even tells you when you're running low. We call that danger days. 
It's built to help you see your money in a whole new light. Experience everything Virtual Wallet has to offer at pncvirtualwallet.com. PNC, for the achiever in us all. From the outside, you can't tell it's equipped with a direct injected engine. From the outside, you can't appreciate how its variable valve timing optimizes power and fuel efficiency. But once you put your foot to the pedal, that's when you discover the power of the Sport Injected 2011 Regal from Buick. And now lease this Buick Regal for $289 per month. teamed up to evolve the smartphone. AT&T. Rethink possible. Weekdays on SNY. Get on the New York Sports Local. Your direct line to the day's top New York sports stories. Oh, what a debacle. Packed with debate. I'm just asking. And opinion. Please, take a Bringing you to a team of diverse personalities. I have as much confidence in him as I got in road game right now. As passionate about New York sports. Oh, I'm fired up. As you are. Oh, for the love of Mike. Daily News Live, Wheelhouse, and Loudmouths. All part of the New York Sports Local. Weekdays starting at 5 on SNY. It's New York Sports here. With 72 cubic feet of cargo space, the CRV is built to surprise. Soldier Field. Motor Trend's favorite crossover, the CRV from Honda. 27 to 14, the Panthers on top of the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. And John, let's take a look now at our Polaris hardest working players of the game. Yeah, plural today because the pit defense has been spectacular. Young people making plays all over. There's the interception by Dom DeSico. We saw Lindsay on the first force fumble, and now you get the uh, veteran Jabal Sheard to get in with the force fumble and a sack. Hit very physical defensively. The big hit there by Jared Hawley, and then the, the young guy on the outside, Brandon Lindsay, again just doing a, a great job of pressuring the pocket all afternoon. Six sacks, three force fumbles, eight tackles for a loss, and an interception. 14 different players with tackles, and that's going to make. Phil Bennett, the gentleman right here on your left, very, very happy. His defense, the, the hardest working, the players' hardest working players of the game. This guy's working pretty hard today. Number 28, Deion Lewis. He breaks through from the left side, picks up eight more. Let's go downstairs and check in with Eamon. Guys, injury update on the Pittsburgh offensive line, number 52, Lucas Nix. The uh, left guard is out. His uh, knee's being iced right now. So uh, in their form is uh, number 54, Chris Jacobson. So right now, Nix, the starter at left guard, out for the Pittsburgh Panthers. John, the coaching staff saying Nix probably had his best game up at the Dome last Saturday. Last week, and that was probably the biggest change this Pitt offensive line really was able to overcome and moving Lucas Nix to the inside made this line productive. Lewis with 78 yards rushing last week. He has 70 now. Sinceri again wide open on that right side with the play action. He's going deep looking for Baldwin, and he has got it. Six five, 230 pounds, 42 inch vertical. Just goes up and gets it. This one goes 45 yards. Mike, what, what great body language shown by John Baldwin about midway through this throw. He's going to look at Tino and say, Tino, just put it up. He raised his hands and give me a chance. And that's all he needed. Plenty of air underneath the football. Now it becomes just a, a basketball game, trying to get that low post and get, it, get yourself, get your body in position to go up and get the play and make the play and Jonathan Baldwin comes down with a big touchdown. Hutchins on for the extra point Baldwin's big game was nine catches 111 yards and a touchdown against Notre Dame numbers today John uh, pretty good. He had five catches for 139 yards in this touchdown look at him just position his body all he's doing Mike is posting himself up in the end zone getting his hip 
right on the side of David Rowe and just he knows he can out jump Rowe in the end zone for six points and John Baldwin 19 receptions in his career of 40 plus yards 11 of those are touchdowns this season six for over 40 plus and two today on the afternoon we've seen one handed grabs we've seen catches in the end zone he's having himself a whale of an afternoon. So Greg Shiano has his work cut out for him now in the fourth quarter. How about the maturation process of uh, Tino Sinceri, huh? number 12, the redshirt sophomore quarterback. That's his ninth touchdown pass in the last four games. Four last week in Syracuse, three so far here today. Well, he's getting good protection to start with number one, and he's spreading the football out. You've seen Hynoski make a number of catches today. You've seen Shanahan make a catch, Street make a catch, Baldwin's involved. They get the good mix of running game with Lewis and Graham, Lewis being the guy that's probably going to get the share of the carries in the fourth quarter, but Pitt was able to overcome not getting into the end zone in the last couple drives, and now a big play from Sinceri to Baldwin. And here comes another big kick by Harper. This one's more of a line drive, and it does not reach the end zone. It's taken at about the uh, one-yard line. It's Lafege again. He breaks to the outside, finds some running room over the 25, dropped at the 32-yard line. Antoine Reed making the stop, a 29-yard return. Let's take a look now at uh, three Liberty Mutual plays of the game with John Baldwin. Well, John Baldwin's made a couple of spectacular catches. There's the first one-handed grab over David Rowe, and he's going to make another one on this corner route in tight co quarters over Green and Rowe. And the last one just off play action, a half boot. Sincere is going to put the football up from his 50-yard line right on the 50-yard line and give his wide receiver an opportunity to catch the football. And we come back, and uh, Sanu catches the football for Rutgers. There's John Baldwin, a 5 for 139, as John mentioned, and a touchdown. That's his fourth touchdown uh, catch this year. So now the Scarlet Knights trying to get back into that cardiac kid form. Last two starts, one quarterback. Pull it out the fire. Deering, the intended receiver, had his hands on the football, but it's uh, broke. Jared loose. Jason Hendricks again, the uh, redshirt freshman out of Brooklyn, New York, on the defensive play. The key for the Panthers defensively has been able, they've been able to put pressure on the young quarterback, and they've, when Dodd's been trying to escape, they've been fast enough to track him down. Good coverage again. Sheard was pushing that. Piles DeSico already has one pick today. Almost had another one. Good coverage by number 31. 6'4-230s played some linebacker. Plays safety. Man, I still say 6'4-230. That's a good size. He must run pretty well. He does run very well. And again, a beneficiary of great pressure on the young quarterback. Jabal Sheard just took the offensive lineman and put it right in front of Chase Dodd's lap. And not another really not good throwing lane, not a clean lane for the quarterback. Nice spiral by Delagana and Sadler's driven back to the 10 yard line. Tries to cut it back up over the uh, 20. Stopped at the 26. 53 yard punt. That's the third time Delagana has got over 50 today. A return of 17. We're going to take a timeout inside 12 minutes. Now 34 14 put on top. I'm his son. And as you well know, I can barely focus on one thing at a time. So between mowing the lawn and football, I choose football. Sorry, Robert. Five dollars doesn't buy my undivided attention. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you might end up with a financial bus cut. So get all state. You can save money and be better protected from mayhem. Like me. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects your home, car, and boat like all state. It guides. It shows. It slides. It toes. It sees. It calls. And it fits. We gave it more ideas per square inch because more is what we do. Terrain, the smaller SUV from GMC. And this is Dr. Pepper Cherry. It's got a little kiss of cherry flavor. You want cherry? How about a little kiss? You can't beat a little kiss of cherry. Trust me.
me. I'm a doctor. First is fast. First is 4G, but plays nice with 3G as well. First has an 8 megapixel HD camera and can stream live video to the web. First has an HDMI out. First shares Wi-Fi with eight devices at once. First is not Stephen First, who played Flounder in Animal House. First has a kickstand for watching video. What will you do first with Evo, the first 4G phone? Only from Sprint, the Now Network. Back at Heinz Field, the Rutgers fans are watching their team pull out. Pull it out of the fire the last couple of games, now trailing 34 to 14. Now let's head down to the field down, check in with Amy McEnany. Well, Mike, of course, Rutgers playing in honor of Eric LeGrand, and Eric is on the thoughts of everyone here at Heinz Field and back in New Jersey and across the college football world. But today, fans were handed this sticker. Pitt is pulling for Eric to show the support the Pittsburgh community has for Eric LeGrand. And also back in the Garden State, I think it's interesting this weekend, guys, more than 1,100 high school players in New Jersey are wearing number 52 stickers on their helmets to show support for Eric so as coach Greg Shiano has said throughout the week the support Eric and his family has received this week has really been amazing it just goes to show the togetherness in the football community that's great uh, Eamon 11,000 huh that's a lot of high school football players and Greg Shiano seeing the grand a guy who would come into the facility locked in he loved everything about college football four year starter at Colonial High School just 15 minutes from the Rutgers Stadium middle linebacker running back now defensive tackle and Eric if you're watching the game uh, everyone in the stadium especially your teammates and fans uh, their thoughts and prayers are with you. That's the operative word right there for Rutgers for the rest of the season now they believe they believe Eric Legrand will walk out on that football field again someday. Deion Lewis on the receiving end gets up to the 40 yard line. Picks up 13. You know, John Jimmy, you're a uh, former Pitt Panther. Under Wanstead, uh, Pittsburgh has had 32 100 yard rushing performances, uh, 27 of those in the last three and a half seasons. Graham has three, Deion has 10, Shady McCoy had 13. So that leaves two other guys. Uh, you don't have to answer right now, think about it. That leaves two other guys, and there's uh, six more 100 yard rushing games. Just, just pick the players, I guess, if okay. they can come up with that. And we don't have to have the number. Deion Lewis uh, with 10, as I mentioned, and Graham with three. Lewis almost broke one there. Boy, Charlie Noonan uh, might have prevented a touchdown. He picked up seven. Well, you saw that little burst of speed as, as that hole opened up, and Noonan finally grabbed it. Well, this is the first time. It looked like last week Deion Lewis was getting closer, but this week you can tell he has that extra burst. He has that vision and the patience, and it's all about the timing of when to hit holes and when they're open. It looks like he has that strength today, and he has that vision going, and that's a dangerous combination because when he hits that hole downhill, he's out the other side in a hurry. Over nine minutes to go. He has 83 yards now. And he stays in there dotting the eye and he cuts back. He might have 100 after this play. Down inside the 35 yard line, Deion Lewis. 23 on the play. Finally, Kasim Green. Mike, there's the vision we were just talking about. Nothing play side, and he's able to cut it back and do a terrific job of protecting the football. There's five white jerseys around him and actually touch him before he goes to the ground. He's able to secure the football and make positive yards. That's the Deion Lewis that everybody in Pittsburgh is used to seeing. Graham back on the field. Graham nowhere to go as uh, big number 96, Charlie Noonan. He's playing uh, lights out here today. They called his name a lot. Noonan, of course, uh, the young man who said Eric Legrand was the kind of guy that could walk into a room and light the room up with his smile and the kind of guy you'd want your sister to date as we take a look now at Graham and Lewis. Four points, oh, four yards to carry for Graham. Lewis now 6.7. And on the year, Graham at 8.3. Yeah, and Graham came into the game fourth in the nation in all purpose yards. At 180 per game, but today it's been Dion Lewis. And Lewis is over 100. Mentioned he had 83, picked up 23 on his last carry, so that's his 11th 100 yard game. And 
Now Ray Graham gets a, a couple of calls, and he goes out of bounds uh, just shy of the 20-yard line. And Sinceri, 21 of 27 for 307 yards, three touchdowns. And Deion Lewis back over the century mark uh, for the first time this year. Well, it must be a luxury for head coach Dave Wanstad to really have no trepidation at all and depending on who's going into the game if Graham's in to run an inside running play or Lewis is going to run a toss sweep or who's going to go outside and catch a receiver screen both of these guys have the ability to catch the football to block and especially to run the football between the tackles. Lewis is back and speaking of running the football touchdown Deion Lewis. Two yards for the touchdown. Last year, Deion Lewis had 180 yards rushing against Rutgers. A couple of touchdowns. Now he's at 130 after 17 carries. Yeah, just an explosive run off the right side and good blocking at the point of attack. Greg Gaskins doing a nice job in the middle of that pit offensive line, and nobody touches Deion Lewis. Last week up in Syracuse, uh, Deion Lewis won over 2,000 for his career. Joining the likes of Shady McCoy, Tony Dorsett, Kervin Richards. But Deion Lewis takes it to the house, JC. 17 rushes and 130 yards for Deion Lewis. This touchdown, a big one, and the Panthers are rolling. Need a better way to save for the things you want? Meet PNC Virtual Wallet. It comes with a wish list that helps you set aside money for the stuff that really matters. Just put the things you want on your wish list and contribute money when you feel like it. Then watch as you get closer to getting what you want. Wish list is built to make saving a whole lot more fun. Experience all the ways Virtual Wallet can help you save at pncvirtualwallet.com. PNC, for the achiever in us all. From the outside, you can't appreciate the wraparound contour of its 12-way power driver's seat or the ice blue interior LED lighting. From the outside, you can't enjoy the standard USB and Bluetooth connectivity. But once you're behind the wheel, that's when you discover the beauty of the sport-injected 2011 Regal from Buick. I'm Linda McMahon, and I approve this message. Dick Blumenthal lied about Linda McMahon's position on the minimum wage, about Social Security, Canadian fundraisers, and Vietnam. But now we've learned his biggest lie yet. He said his countrywide mortgage settlement wouldn't cost taxpayers a dime. Turns out it did. At retiree pension funds, too, $8.6 billion. Dick Blumenthal took care of Countrywide and raided retirees' pensions. Another Blumenthal lie. Today's Big East Network game has been brought to you by PNC for the Achiever and us all. The all-new Sport Injected 2011 Buick Regal. Tradewinds Resort on St. Pete Beach, Florida. Go long. Our beach is open. Allstate, you're in good hands. Dr. Pepper, there's nothing like a pepper. The Polaris factory authorized clearance event going on until October 31st. Priority mail flat rate boxes only from the Postal Service. A simpler way to ship. Bonnage, sounds good. And by the fourth annual Direct TV SEC Big East Invitational, December 8th and 11th in both Louisville and Pittsburgh. As we ride the incline, we welcome you back to the Big East Network Game of the Week presented by PNC. 41 to 14 of Pittsburgh on top. Well, on top of the incline, beautiful view of the city. Obviously, you're very familiar with that, uh, playing your college football here. 
Nice shot of Mount Washington up there. That's beautiful. So the Pitt Panthers now flirting with a 500 yard game of total offense. Yeah, they're riding right now at 496 in total offense. Rutgers only able to manage 131 yards of total offense, and that's due to the pressure that the Pitt defensive front has been able to put on the young quarterback. I think Harper's leg is getting tired. He's been kicking off so much here in the second half. This one drives the young freshman Thomas back and he stopped just over the five yard line. All right, let's take a look now at our Dr. Pepper unrivaled player of the game. Well, Deion Lewis had himself an afternoon bouncing back. We, we talked about him in the open about getting that little bit of spark back at the Carrier Dome last week. Well, you can see he had running downhill with authority. His vision was terrific today, being able to bounce the football to the outside and his patience being able to wait and see that hole and then burst through to the other side. 17 carries for 130 yards and one touchdown. He is the unrivaled player of the game, the Dr. Pepper player of the game. His 11th 100 yard rushing game. Tom Savage in that quarterback now. Greg Shadow said he's healthy, his hand is better, and uh, he could play if called upon. His first pass is deflected. So he feels some of that pressure back in the pocket as well. Savage, 6'5, 226. A freshman All-American last year for the Scarlet Knights. We had an outstanding season a year ago, and he started out this year struggling a little bit, had the injury. So uh, now he gets some valuable playing time to get his get his feet wet again to a playing situation. Savage. He's going down. That's the seventh sack down for the Pitt Panthers. 21 on the year. Tyrone Zell was in there along with Alexi. And Mike Savage is going to be a bigger target back there. You talked about him being 6'5", but doesn't have the elusiveness of Chase Dodd, who's now on the sidelines. So that's a, a sitting target because, you know, the Pitt Panthers have been able to get after the quarterback today. John, right after this play, we'll have a final from Morgantown. They keep it on the ground, and... Young is going to be shy of that 19 yard line. Had to get to the 19 for the first down. As Dom DeSico and uh, Jared Hawley come up, a gain of uh, 13 on the play. You ready for this? I love you got? Big East football because of the parity. West Virginia 14 in Morgantown. Syracuse 19. Wow. That's a final. That's a shocker. So Syracuse beating West Virginia 19 to 14. That's uh, Doug Marone's second Big East victory. And that's a team that we saw two weeks ago when they went down and defeated South Florida. They played. Very tough, very fast, and very aggressive. I hope we don't lose our producer, John Kettering, out of the truck <laughs> after we announce that score. John, John Kettering, a big West Virginia fan. Maybe we shouldn't say that in Pittsburgh. He might not get out of, out of the city. <laughs> Sadler. Oh, he had some running room. Gets inside the 45-yard line. Cameron Sadler. He turns at 21. And he thought just for a millisecond he was going to take it to the house. He had a chance and he had good blocking out in front of him. And Sadler's had a mixed bag today. He's had a couple punts land in front of him that he wasn't able to field. But when he's been able to catch the football cleanly, he's run the football with authority and a new quarterback in the football game for the Panthers. Pat Bostick, the junior out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, comes in to uh, finish up the fourth quarter. Comes in 6 of 12, 44 yards, redshirted last year. Now he's only a redshirt junior. Does he come back next year? Does he move I on? I think after so. That? I think he uh, enjoys himself, and uh, he's always one play away from getting in there. So I, I would think so. Even redshirting, as we talked about last week, he loved the schematic part of the game and loved just uh, watching him work on the game plan. Lewis gets the ball over the go, or Chris Burns rather. That's number 29. No, that's uh, yeah, Chris Burns. He came in late last week against Syracuse. So Burns. More or less will play this one out now as uh, you see inside six minutes. So Pittsburgh's going to go to 2 0 in the Big East. They were the preseason favorites despite four new offensive linemen, despite a new quarterback. You see, Sinceri, they just announced the score inside Heinz Field that West Virginia went down. I'm just glad they still boo Penn State when their score goes up, Mike. <laughs> I'm staying away from all that stuff. Burns again. Shy of the 30 picks up two. You know, Sinceri now with 12 touchdowns, four picks. How about Zach Caleros in a loss? 
He threw three touchdowns last night, so he has 20 touchdowns from four picks, and now Sinceri up to uh, 12 and four. So with West Virginia going down, we see the updated standings. Uh, Pittsburgh will go to two and zero. Rutgers one and one. Syracuse at two and one, sitting on top. And then UConn and Louisville go at it at 3:30. How about uh, Randy Edsel now? He gets uh, Cody Endress back at quarterback, and now Endress is gone again. Yeah, and he has a freshman quarterback in in box that's going to start today. So it's a, a situation for Randy Edsel. He can't catch a break at the quarterback position because Endress would have that team going in the right direction. He's himself game. going. Game. Offense, number 19. number 19. Five yard penalty. Five yard penalty. Third down. Third down. In case you're wondering what happened to Cody Endress, uh, he was uh, suspended, of course, for the first uh, three or four games this year for breaking team rules and he went out and broke more team rules and uh, Randy Edsel said uh, enough is enough and uh, he's not coming back next year and Michael Box as you mentioned uh, the redshirt freshman out of Georgia looks like uh, it's his job now unless someone come in and next year and take it from yeah him. you're right and it's a situation where you know with, with the parity in the Big East Conference the way it is you're always in it you know until probably the last couple of weeks to decide who's going to win the championship. Well, shovel pass uh, doesn't go anywhere as uh, Boharness. He was right there to shovel stop pass. that one. Uh, Burns on the receiving end of that shovel pass. I'm I'm shocked that, that Syracuse, after the way they played against Pittsburgh at home, you know that was probably the most excited Carrier Dome we've seen in in two, three, four years. And now you go uh, after playing a game like that against the Panthers to go down to Morgantown, who I thought West Virginia was the cream of the Big East Conference. The, the way that they were playing, the way they were stifling defense. They have playmaker at quarterback. They have you know a, a great running back in Divine. weren't able to get it done at home. Jock Sanders. Yeah. Austin. They got a ton of playmakers. Silvestro coming in the fast to make a defensive stop. Boy, Rutgers continues to play hard, even though they're down 41 to 14, of course. Because their thoughts and prayers are with number 52, Eric LeGrand. Well, that's one thing I noticed. Uh, even though the scoreboard is uh, tilting towards Pittsburgh right now, this uh, Rutgers team, they have played hard for the entire game. Absolutely. Now, you would expect nothing less because Greg Schiano, uh, you know, the way he coaches and the way he, he has discipline on his team and the way they're pulling for their teammate, you know, Eric LeGrand, and what he gives to, to his teammates, you know, the, the attitude of being able to talk to him today and try to, you know, play for him and, and carry his attitude onto the field today. You know, it's a special group of people. You know, on that Rutgers sideline. Savage hands off. Antoine Williams gets the call. Antoine Williams. He's a sophomore out of Woodbridge, Virginia, and John hasn't played a whole lot for Greg Schiano, but uh, I got to tell you, he's averaging 11 and a half yards a carry. But uh, still learning uh, the ins and outs of big time college football. He came in with six carries only for 70 yards. He's got the speed in that backfield that. Uh, Hopefully the future is bright for him. Right now Tom Savage uh, milking the clock down to uh, get his team back to Piscataway. There's Williams showing some of that uh, running prowess. Uh, gets up close to the first down marker. Picks up 11 more on the play. And I mentioned he's averaging 11 and a half as we take a look at Rutgers. They're on the road at USF. Then home against Syracuse. And at Cincinnati, Louisville, then at West Virginia, December 4th. Yeah, you just don't know what team's going to show up when you go to South Florida. If it's the team that, you know, was able to go on the road to beat Cincinnati or the team that uh, was defeated, for, you know, by Syracuse at home. So Rutgers right now are going to get back home, try to correct what they the mistakes they made today and try to correct the, the blocking up front. That was the big deal today. They weren't able to block Pitt's front seven. Savage out of the uh, shotgun. Uh, Williams there's a break to the outside. Up over the midfield stripe. Now Savage last year 14 touchdowns seven picks over 2200 yards of throwing the football and now it's going to be interesting to see if he can uh, win that job back in Pittsburgh. Hard to believe, but Louisville, West Virginia, the only two more home games remaining here at Heinz Field as we go deeper into the season. Well, I can't believe we're this deep into the season. I know. Where did it go? We come back next week and have the Panthers for their homecoming, and then they're on the road at UConn the following week. Inside two minutes, second and four now for Rutgers. Savage comes up firing, and he finds his man. It's complete. And uh, that's Harrison. Mark Harrison, as I mentioned, averaging 18 yards a catch now. 
Five for 112 against UConn. And Greg Shiano saying that Tim Wright probably would have been the uh, the starter at wide receiver, but uh, he went down with an injury. And that Harrison has a lot of potential. Picked up 19 on that play. So the Pittsburgh defense. You know the headlines might go with uh, Baldwin, Sinceri, and uh, Deion Lewis, but that defense really, really shut the door on this Rutgers football team. Sack after sack. Seven sacks on the day, 21 on the season now. And Savage uh, keeps it, gets a push out of bounds. Buddy Jackson uh, pushing it out, number 21. Seven sacks, three forced fumbles, eight tackles for a loss, five passes broken up, and a pick. Well, that makes Phil Bennett on the left there, your screen, in his third season as the Pitt defensive coordinator, very happy because he was concerned with this young quarterback. He said, I have a few different wrinkles, but so far, he's been able to, you know, iron out those wrinkles and the teams he's faced in the fourth quarter. Well, this game didn't get that far into the game for, for Pitt to have the game on the line. They were able to take care of business in the first half. Savage with the pump fake goes upstairs and finds his man Harrison pulls it in 6 3 2 30 just a little bit bigger than the defensive back and he pulls it in so for Harrison that's his third touchdown and this one covers 27 yards. Well you can see why Greg Schiano is so happy with the future of Mark Harrison watch him go up and take the football away from Saheed Amora. He just goes right up and times mm. it perfectly and takes the football away. Sam Didn't have great position, but he had a little bit of uh, anticipation on going up and getting the football. You know, it's interesting, John. Uh, I know Savage was hurt, but we saw him play against FIU, and he just didn't seem focused. He wasn't playing very well. But now with the wake-up call with Dodd coming in, uh, Savage looked pretty good on that throw. And he did. You know, he was throwing the ball well in warm-ups, and we were watching, and we are saying, I think his hand is really close to 100% because he had a lot of zip on the football. And that'll be interesting going, you know, throughout the season now to see which way they're going to go at quarterback with Savage, you know, being closer to healthy and having a productive freshman quarterback that has played well over the last couple of weeks. Uh, Greg Shadow stuck to his guns. He said, hey, we have two good quarterbacks, and I'm going to play whoever gives us the best chance to win that football game. So keep an eye on Rutgers next, next week. And the good situation is that both of these guys are young quarterbacks and it wasn't that Tom Savage has had three years underneath his belt and coming in and getting that job taken away from him. So there'll be you know competition at practice and I think that's healthy for this team to be able to go out and compete every day in practice to know that your job's on the line. It's interesting John I said keep an eye on Rutgers next week but uh, go back to that graphic and that schedule. I think they have a bye week. I think uh, it said November 3rd was their next game at USF. So now Greg Shano has a couple of weeks to uh, or a week and a half. They play those midweek games, of course. 41 to 21 other games of interest. Of course, at 3.30, we mentioned UConn and Louisville going at it. We'll see the Cardinals in, next week here at Heinz Field. San Santee with the uh, kickoff. 90 seconds to go before they put this one in the books. And it hits, and it's fumbled. Boy number 48, uh, Chris Mike. The sophomore fullback uh, had it and he dropped it, but Pittsburgh recovers the fumble. So number one, Oklahoma taking on number 11, Mizzou. Well, you look at uh, Oklahoma, number one in the BCS. In Cincinnati, probably, I know it's uh, would have, could have, but uh, DJ Woods had those couple of fumbles. They could have beat Oklahoma and Cincinnati that night. Yeah, that's probably that really turned their season around in the middle because, you know, they weren't playing great on offense. And since that game, they've played pretty good offensively. They just didn't score enough points last night or keep South Florida out of the end zone. Yeah, I guess the latter. They didn't keep them out of the end zone yeah. because they scored plenty yeah, of points. They did. 590 yards of uh, offense and uh, Cincinnati and they moved it down too. and uh, Caleros with three touchdowns. He was banged up at the end. And Jazz Anderson came in and almost led him to the, uh, the game winning touchdown but you know, uh, just came up shy. A difficult situation too for Anderson to come into you know really didn't even notice on TV watching it that uh, Caleros was hurt but he had that left knee bandaged pretty well. So let's see what happens going forward for Cincinnati at the quarterback position. Final 45 seconds of this game from Heinz Field. There's a hop, skip, and a jump just like last year for Deion Lewis. Uh, 
as he starts 49 with 149. Or Chris Burns, check that. Uh, excuse me. That's two weeks in a row. I think uh, they gave Lewis a couple of uh, carries last week when it was actually Burns. So my apologies to the Burns family. And that's going to be the final play of this football game. So both Rutgers and Pittsburgh, their thoughts are with Eric Legrand back in New Jersey. But Dave Wanstead comes out on top. That's the second straight victory now over Greg Schiano. After Shiano had won four straight. Remember the last time Shiano and Rutgers came in here with Mike Teal, they put up 54 points in a uh, shocking 54 to 34 win over Pittsburgh. But... Tino Sinceri, number 12, the redshirt sophomore quarterback is getting better and better. And I, uh, Coming up on the Big East post game show, Roman and Don will break down this game. Also, a huge upset in the Big East. We will go through it all with you just in a minute when the Big East post game show gets started right after this. Get all your post game highlights, analysis, and the latest conference updates and news from our team of Big East experts on the Big East Football Post Game Show, coming up only on SNY. Looking to stay on top of the Mets as they rebuild for 2011 with constantly updated insider info, insight, and links on all the off-season news and rumors? There's a place for that. Mets Blog, presented by Verizon, featured on SNY.TV. You've never seen fast. You've never held it in your hand and unleashed it with a fingertip. Never watched pixels whip by at one gigahertz and had your neurons struggle to keep up. You've never seen fast because you've never seen this. The Droid Incredible by HTC. It's nothing short of its name. Buy a Droid Incredible with Flash and get any phone free. Jonas Schwartz, Don McPherson, Roman Oban, the Big East postgame show. Coming up, we will talk about a couple of big things in the Big East. Pittsburgh dominating Rutgers in the second half. Roman, what was the difference in that second half? I mean, you looked at an even game going into halftime in the second half. It was the, the John Baldwin show. I mean, the plays that he made downfield to really open up the second uh, running game in the second half. A uh, tremendous job offensively for Pittsburgh. And McPherson here just stopped smiling that wide <laughs> grin a second hey, ago. every now and then. Yeah, Syracuse, that <laughs> big win in West Virginia. What'd you make of that? Well, the, clearly for Syracuse, the, the defense showed up to play, put a lot of pressure on Geno Smith. And I have to say that on the other side of the ball, West Virginia did not play the game we expect to see out of this team that's ranked number 20 in the BCS. It's a big upset to everybody, but one right there. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we're talking about it coming up on the Big East Post Game Show. It's right after this. Big East football on SNY is brought to you by Sprint. Stay in the game with this $69.99 plan from Sprint and get way more than the other guys. Visit Sprint.com slash football for more details. Uh, duh. I just got your email. I'm out for the season. <laughs> Don't worry about that. I switched to Sprint's $69.99 plan, so I get unlimited emails. What, what does that mean? It means I'm dropping you for my fantasy team, that's for sure. What does that mean about my knee? Oh, your knee's totally shattered. Did you see how hard that guy hit you? I, I don't want to see... Hey, 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 hey. Relax. <laughs> Not costing me any extra. Only Sprint gives you unlimited text, web, and calling to any mobile for just $69.99. Sprint, the now network. right back we call Tuesday Caesars Atlantic City routinely spectacular uh, unfortunately the breakfast scones will be replaced by breakfast muffins additionally meeting cantaloupe will unfortunately be eliminated you're asked to bring in your own fruit uh, perhaps even something handheld maybe that's an apple uh, for some that might be a banana all right let's just keep it rolling 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 page 79 um, Unfortunately, I'm called upon to review the dry erase board rules. Acura engineers gave the luxurious TL standard leather, moonroof, and Bluetooth. 
There's also a 440-watt multi-channel sound system designed by Grammy-winning recording engineer Elliot Shiner that stores thousands of songs on a hard drive. Available with the technology package, the Acura TL. Discover it in a test drive. Take advantage of attractive lease rates on the 2010 Acura TL for well-qualified customers. Big East post game show. Jonah Schwartz alongside Don McPherson and Roman Oven. We just watched Pitt beat up on Rutgers 41 to 21 as they really took over in the second half and dominated the second half. What was a close game at halftime? I'm wondering now is Pitt turning out to be the class of the conference? I think you have to give them some credit for looking like the team that we expected them to be back in August. This is a team that's doing well on offense. The defense stepped up big time today and shut down an otherwise pretty potent uh, Rutgers offense. I mean, I think you're going back to two weeks ago, we were very down on Pitt. One of the disappointments in the Big East, but the way they played the last two weeks, you look at Sincerity, nine, nine touchdowns last three weeks, seven in the last uh, two weeks. Offensively, have done tremendous. Deion Lewis, we're starting to see him be the same guy that he was last season. I think they're playing more of a complete game. And as uh, the head coach said, they were a better record than they were at two and three uh, until the last two yeah, weeks. Yeah, and they finally found Jonathan Baldwin on the deep ball as well. It's an excellent point, which we brought up at halftime. We said, isn't he an underutilized asset? Well, in the second half, I wouldn't say he was underutilized. They got him very much involved. Yeah, and Jonathan Baldwin's a big, physical kind of wide receiver that, that quarterbacks love because you can do this. Just throw it up, and he's going to make great things happen. He had two one-handed catches today that were both big, big-time plays. That right there is just, you just don't, don't get any better than and that is wide out. Yeah, and when you when you when you catch the ball the way he did those big one-handed grabs, here comes the second one. You know that he's working to do that in practice. And when he when you that ball goes up in there, he says, "Look, I don't care. Throw it to me in the huddle. I'm gonna catch it." He he did it. He showed it. He proved himself today. Great job. You can't say a, 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 how well of a job he did today. Yeah, and I, I thought Sinceri was was inaccurate last week against Syracuse with the deep ball. I don't think he was that accurate again this week with the deep ball. But he, what, one thing that you know now is that when you throw it deep to Jonathan Baldwin, he's going to work for you at the wide opposition. He's going to help you make things happen. And, of course, the defense did a great job harassing Chase Dodd all day long. Guys, we looked at Chase Dodd the last three weeks, the development that he'd made. We talked about his leadership, his poise. But we had never seen him get sacked. Five times and a half, six, seven times overall. Uh, you lose Anthony Davis last year. You lose two other offensive linemen. We knew coming into the season that uh, Rutgers would struggle up front with protecting the quarterback. They showed it today. And, uh, but give our hats off the pit defense, defensive line in particular, how much they got after this quarter. Yeah, and I think the defensive line will get a lot of credit for, for the way, because you see the end of the play. But give some credit to the coverage, because they, I think they confused Chase Dodd in a number of different situations where he held off the ball because he had no place to go with it. How do we rate Pitt at this point? Now, Roman and Don, as both of you mentioned, you know, Pitt was struggling so much, but now they've come into conference play, and for two weeks, they have looked very, very good. How do we rate Pitt at this point? I think in the last two weeks, you have to say that they're one of the most improving uh, teams in college football. You look at the success they had last year, uh, tremendous season last year. You look at this season, we were hard on them. Miami was really the only game that they got blown out. Utah overtime, uh, another game they lose close, but they were 2-3, and three, and they showed what they were, a 2-3 football team. But as uh, the head coach said, they were way better than their record, and they've really proved that, uh, proven that by the way they played the last two weeks. Yeah, there's no question about it. This is a team, remember, they're going to get Greg Romius back. They're the, uh, the defensive player of the year for the Big East last year. He's been missing for most of the season. So they're going to get Romeo's back. This team is going to get a lot better. That's why I don't like the early early season polls. Wait to see how things get when teams start to get their feet underneath them. We always learn a lot about these teams once we get into conference play. And I, I think we learned a lot about a Rutgers team that really was playing with a lot on their plate today without question. Everybody, of course, their minds on Eric Legram, the Rutgers player who right now is paralyzed from the neck down. Pitt showing tremendous support as the student body of Pitt signed that banner, pulling for Eric Grant. Believe the message from Rutgers as their thoughts and prayers are with Grant right now. Great support from both teams. Rutgers began with the Eric LeGrand Belief Fund, which they started off yesterday. You can go to www.scarletknights.com backslash believe in order to give that foundation. The money goes directly to LeGrand 
and his family. You know, they are trying to make their best out of what has been a terrible, terrible situation. You have to give them credit for it. You, you really do. And, and I think everyone who ever steps foot on the football field and the people around football recognize that, that these young men give their bodies to the game. And when you see something like this tragically happen, it's, it's encouraging to see the, the outpouring of support. We want to continue to see that outpouring of support for Eric Legrand. And remember that it's not just this one week. This is the rest of this young man's life. And we need to stand by him for that, for that amount of time. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, John, now you and I have both been in this position. Every time you put on a football uniform, you expect to play healthy, get off, move on to the next week. You don't really expect that that might be the last time. Although the risk is there, that might be the last time you might be able to do that. Everyone's really pulling for these young men just to be able to walk again. We're not even talking about football. Just to be able to walk again and be a productive a human being, a productive citizen. And you know what? Before we move on, I know Rutgers lost a football game today. But they really, they, they are winners this week. And I mean that in all honesty because, and I don't mean to sound trite or cliche, very difficult week. The fact that they were able to focus and come in here and play a football game, no matter what the outcome, a lot of credit to Greg Schiano and his program. It, it really is. And we've always talked about sports as being able to, to be able to deliver important life lessons and I think that's one of the things that you have to focus on here it's a tragic uh, uh, a tragic incident with, with Eric Legrand on the field but what it does for this team what it teaches these young men about how frail life is and how they should look look, look after one another love one another I think it's an important lesson that people should take out of this experience yeah I mean and in a bigger picture you see all the stickers uh, you know pit side get, handing them out uh, over 200 high schools in the state of New Jersey showing their support. I mean, the nation really came together uh, as a support. It really shows the bigger picture where what really what football, what role football plays in this picture. Absolutely, we've talked about that all day long. We can't stress it enough. You know, it's been a tough week for Rutgers. They handled themselves as best as anybody could under this situation. It was a busy day of Big East football. We do want to show you some highlights from elsewhere. Syracuse, West Virginia, the 20th ranked Mountaineers, the only ranked team in the Big East taking on Houston Morgantown. Geno Smith in the first quarter, Tavon Austin back in the end zone. We've seen that before. We have seen a lot from Geno Smith and Tavon Austin. This is an explosive offense for West Virginia, but somehow Syracuse is able to shut them down, and there they come back with Van two for the touchdown. Massive to two, 29-yard score. Syracuse up 10-7, first play the next possession. Noel Devine, we're used to seeing in this, aren't we? We are very used to seeing this. The running back coach says, when you go outside the sideline, it's all up to you. He makes it He makes it work when he hits that sideline. 32 yards down the sideline. It would lead to this. Ryan Clark powering his way in. And again, the West Virginia offense has the ability to explosive this on the outside and the speed on the inside. 14-10 Mountaineers into the first. Geno Smith intercepted this time by Phillip Thomas. Nice move right there. Good move, good risk to jump the route. Obviously, he vacated the back of the end zone, but it paid off when he returns at the third yard line. And two plays later, DeLon Carter breaks some tackles. Look at this run. Look at the determination. You know, when you talk about a team like Syracuse and you say West Virginia has to look out for these guys, that's the reason why. These kids have learned to win. They've learned to be tough. you got to give them credit for that non-conference first half of the season. They taught them how to make plays like that. Led to a field goal. Carter injured his hip later in the second quarter, did not return to the game. And then later in the second quarter, Geno Smith picked by Doug Hope. He used to be a running back. Looks like he used to be a defensive <laughs> lineman. Not the way he's running this back. I know this young man very well. Good job really leading that defense. Oh, with any interceptions. Smith's third interception of the day led to a field goal. Syracuse 19-14 at the half. Second half, both teams scoreless. Less than a minute to go in the fourth. West Virginia on the 20. Looking to take the lead. Geno Smith sacked. A loss of 12 yards. Can't take a sack there. Next play is third and 22. And Geno Smith here, I'm not sure he makes the right move at all. Under pressure. Well, I guess he has to do it there. Throws it out of bounds. I guess what I was getting at was here on fourth and 22 got to make a better decision, you know? Re you really do. And if you're West Virginia and Geno Smith, you have so many playmakers, you don't have to throw the ball into the end zone. Give it to one of your playmakers, let them take it down to the end zone. That was a big mistake by West Virginia there at the end of the, at the, end of the game. Give Syracuse defense a lot of credit and Doug Marone in this program for hanging in there in this game and fighting to the end. At least give somebody a shot to make a play. Of course, easy for me to say. I wasn't getting hit all day by people. <laughs> Syracuse pulls off the upset. They win 19-14. Simply a huge, huge win for the Cuse, who, you know, last week there was buzz on campus, then Pitt came up and handled them, you know, pretty cleanly up in Syracuse. But now maybe the buzz returns. What a win for Syracuse. I mean, what a great win for Syracuse. And, and you know what coaches say in this situation. You don't want to be the team when, when Syracuse realizes how good they really are. I mean, West Virginia, they both play tough. But Syracuse, this was Syracuse's day. They did a great job today, defensively especially, uh, really putting, putting themselves in a position to, to have this big win. Every, they're both 5-2 and two now. And uh, the, the Big East is really wide open. You know, we saw a lot of good defensive play from Syracuse when they played South Florida and beat South Florida. 
down in Tampa. Now they go into Morgantown and beat, beat a very good, potent West Virginia offense, and they did it with their defensive play. You got to give it, Scott Schaefer, the defensive coordinator, a tremendous amount of credit for mixing up coverages, getting the interceptions against Geno Smith, who's been so active, and as well, shutting down those, those high, potent playmakers, Austin and, and Noel, Noel Devine. Really, none of those guys ever got a rhythm. You have to give a lot of credit to that Syracuse defense for keeping them off balance. You know, this was the first game where I really saw Geno Smith rushed. I really yeah. saw him making making some bad decisions. This isn't a guy that we've seen all day. That really takes gives credit to Schaefer's defensive scheme and how well they execute this game on the field. You know, sometimes you have to look at the way a, a defensive uh, offensive coaches. Um, divides their game plan. Against Syracuse last year, last week, Pitt went deep a lot. They threw the deep ball. And you saw West Virginia trying to do that. That's why Geno Smith seemed like he was holding on to the ball, looking for the deep ball, instead of getting it to his playmakers the way they usually do in that spread offense. Get it to him quick, let them make the play. This time he was holding on to the ball way too long. We were all watching that game, and as it was coming down to the wire, we all said to ourselves, this is where Geno Smith probably scores to put them ahead. Right. Tremendous credit to Syracuse. What, what Biggest win since... You were there? No, that might be no, a little strong, but I wanted to see your face when I said it. <laughs> All right, much more from today's game coming up on the Post Game Show. Don and Roman will hand out their report cards. Plus, we'll hear from Pitt wide receiver John Baldwin. Pitt beat Rutgers 41-21. We are back after this. First is the first 4G phone. First is live video chat on the go. So you can be face to face even when you can't be. Whether you're on 4G, 3G, and of course, Wi Fi. First lets you stream live video to the web in three, two, one. What will you do first with Evo? The first 4G phone. Only from Sprint, the Now Network. You could switch for great gas mileage or seats that flip and fold with one hand. You could switch for up to 600 highway miles on a single tank of gas or the 100,000 mile powertrain warranty. Over a thousand people a day are switching to Chevy. They're not just trading in, they're trading up. Qualified lessees can get a low mileage lease on this 2011 Malibu LS for around $199 a month. Call for details. Find your nearest Chevy dealer on ChevyOffers.com. year, smoking leaves 31,000 children fatherless. Don't miss a moment. Quit smoking today. For help quitting, talk to your doctor or call 1-866-NY-QUITS. I'm Gary Apple. Coming up tonight on Geico Sports Night, going up the very latest from college football, Rutgers at Pittsburgh. An emotional day for the Scarlet Knights. We'll have that, plus the baseball playoffs continue. We'll have it all tonight. Looking for Coach Coughlin's post-game comments? Everybody wanted to win. Or crave access to a Giants football block? Constantly updated with the latest insider info and opinion on all things Big Blue. There's a place for that. All right, here's the highlights from today's Panthers victory. Rutgers at Pitt going for 2-0 starts in the Big East, both sides, showing their support for Eric LeGrand. Scoreless game, Pitt driving, Tino Sinceri looking for Ray Graham on the screen pass, but it's tipped, intercepted watch, watch by Charlie Newton. Newton. Yeah, watch Newton shift hands with the Here's ball. Hands. He shifts hands once and twice. I that know. guy was a running back, a fullback, when he was eight years old. He still remembers the ball handling drills. Look at this watch play him. right here. This is a, a defensive line. Oh, this dream. is the 300-pound guy's dream. Shift his hands, shift it back in his oh, ball. I can't get enough of this. He's going to he's gonna appreciate this when he gets a little old. And on the ensuing drive, Ball on the one yard line, third and goal. Jersey Joe Martin it gets in. Running back coach says, Jersey Joe, if you're going to hit the sidelines, go out. Of, it's all on you because you have no blockers. Good job. But there was a question whether he got in. Oh, I don't think he got in at all. But you know what? That's what they. That's why they had instant replay, not to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> they looked at it. They said it was right. Play was upheld. Seven nothing. Rutgers. Pitt charging now. First and twenty. Sincere. Mike Shanahan. Seventeen yard game. Pitt still moving. Now inside the five. Sincere who looked 
really calm and composed all day goes to Mike Cruz. Nice little touch pass there by Sinceri. This kid is starting to find out how to throw that ball down the field. 7-7 seven, seven game, Pitt moving again. First and 10, Sinceri looking for Jonathan Baldwin. Jonathan Baldwin was cool, calm, collected all day. One hand, he didn't even he didn't need a second hand today. He only needed one hand. <laughs> what a catch this is! As you said, one hand just reaching out, fantastic catch in traffic. And next play, Ray Graham, nice run there. Well, I like Ray Graham when he gets into the perimeter. He has that nice slashing uh, running style. I like him when he gets into the secondary. 13 yards for the touchdown. Oh. Seven Panthers, but late in the second, Wayne Warren blocks the punt. Brandon Bing on it. Special teams coming through. Special teams coming through. They they really play it an inspiring part of this football game, keeping Rutgers alive the whole game. Tied at 14. Panthers looking to strike one more time before the half. Third and nine. Nice moves by Graham. Maybe the moves were too nice because right here doesn't hold on to the ball. Well, that's why I say I like Ray Graham when he gets into the second and he slashes, but he also takes a lot of chances. Twice this afternoon, he fumbled the football trying to make extra yards. Once they got it back, but this time they lose it. Joe LaFez, who's always seems to be around turnovers, getting the job done there. Third quarter, Rutgers ball, Jordan Thomas. A big gain. Same issue, losing the ball. Same issue, the coach on the sideline screaming, you have to come back to the football no matter how big of a play you just made. That recovers, and two and drive, second and six, Sinceri to cruise again. Sinceri, once again, the nice touch pass over the top to the tight end. They're starting to find the intermediate passing game, and then they go to the big man. We always say two hands until you're a pro, but not if you're John the ball, but one hand is fine. All right, Bremen was two hands until you play Rutgers uh, <laughs> this Saturday, as a matter of fact. What a catch this was, snagging the ball out of the air. Led to a field goal, which made it 24-14. Now 27-14 pit. Baldwin, he wasn't done yet. He wasn't done yet. He wasn't done on this play, especially another one. This is what happens when you have a great quarterback and receiver relationship. He says, put the ball in the air. Baldwin says, I'm going to come down and get it. 34-14 Panthers, and then Pitt again at the 22. Deion Lewis, we used to see this last year. Look who found his legs. Deion Lewis is back. You have to give the credit to that passing game and to Ray Graham that have opened things up for Deion Lewis to look like the Deion Lewis of last year. So Pitt wins it 41-21. They're now 2-0 in the Big East. Sonseri, 21-27, 307 yards, three touchdowns. Lewis, nice game as well, but the star, Jonathan Baldwin, our Eamon McEnany, caught up with him after the game. Yeah, he's in the I'm standing by with John Baldwin and John. One of your opponents from Rutgers, Mason Robinson, just said you're going to make top 10 plays at Sports Center tonight, but he was, wasn't specific which one. How did you make those two grabs, one handed grabs today? You know, I'm just trying to make a play. You know, the, they needed me to make a play. Tino threw a great pass, and I just made the catches. You made plays today. Dion ran hard, Ray ran hard, and Tino had a good game. How explosive can this offense be when you guys are clicking? We get way better, you know. We did a great job today, but we're trying to strive for the best, and we just got to keep working hard. What was the difference in today's second half as to earlier in this year when no one was on the same page all at once? You had guys, but today everyone contributed. It was early in the year, you know, and like I said, we're going to keep taking strides to keep improving week after week. All right, John, thanks a lot. Make sure to DVR Sports Center, top ten places of the week tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Pitt really seemed to find something in this game that they'd been looking for really since last year, which was their deep passing game. That really opens everything up for their offense, no? It really does. And when you have a receiver like Jonathan Baldwin, he's going to be the type of guy that's going to tell his quarterback, just throw it up there, I'll go get it. When your quarterback starts to believe that, it opens a lot of things up. Last year, Deion Lewis, 1,700 yards rushing. This year, not as much, but the, the passing game's starting to get going. The running game's starting to get going. He's making his, his strides as a football player. You're starting to see the pit team that everyone saw for about nine or ten weeks last season. All right, time now for our professors to give their report cards. <laughs> as a matter of fact, what would you see, Don? What, you, what grades are you giving? Well, the grades I'm giving today for the Pittsburgh team, you start with the offense. The offense gets an A. They found the deep ball with Jonathan Baldwin. Deion Lewis found his legs back. 513 yards in total offense. The defense also gets an A. You have to give them credit. Shut down Chase Dodd. Only 62 yards passing for the young quarterback. Special teams get to C only because they had that block, that block punt for a touchdown. Overall, it's an A- because of the block, block punt for a touchdown. You have to get all of your players in tune, and that means special teams as well. Overall, they get a C. Well, not great. Rating on the curve. I'm glad I didn't have you as a professor. That's right. At least. Roman, <laughs> what's your report card? Well, Professor Ovens' report card says uh, defensively for, for Rutgers, I'm going to give them a C. Uh, they, they gave up the deep ball a lot today. You know, you don't want to see. Obviously, there were great catches by Jonathan Baldwin, but defensively, they could have pressed the quarterback a little bit more. They could have defended some of those deep passes. Again, credit to John Baldwin, great one-handed catches. Offensively, I'm going to give them a C, a very generous C. They could not keep the quarterback clean. Chase Dodd was around, running around, making bad decisions. He got sacked six times. Uh, not a good job. 
offensive line. I'm always going to be hard on offensive line. Offensive line had to step up. Uh, didn't do a good job offensively, uh, giving them a C. Uh, special teams really is the only uh, part of the team that showed up. And it's fitting they really played in, inspiring football uh, in lieu of what happened last week. Special teams was an A. You block a punt. You, know, you, you force a fumble on a kickoff return. And uh, they did a really good job. Overall, I'm going to give them a B, but I'm going to give them a B with an asterisk. The, the Rutgers team, Rutgers community, has had to put up with a lot this week. Uh, but no, there's no more victories. Obviously, someone had to win and lose this game. But Rutgers is going to get a B overall uh, by how they just stuck well in there and played hard all the way. Here. And, and, and one of the guys who played very well for them all the way through was Joel Lafay, who continues to be around every turnover. He's just around every loose ball there's seems to be. Yeah, you need a guy like that, a, guy, a scrappy guy who's going to be a leader on your team, especially on, on special teams. He's going to show you how to play the game and show young guys how to play the game. You love to have a guy like Joel Lefebvre on your team because he is going to help everybody step up their game and make big plays. You see it right here on the fumble, you're forcing the fumble against Ray Graham. When you're a coach and you're in a film room, you're going to look at the plays. You know, as an O-lineman, you block a guy outside the screen. As a special teams coach, you're going to say, watch the guy that keeps running, that keeps playing, that keeps play alive. A guy that doesn't give up. This guy, LaFetch, is indicative of the type of people that, that Greg Schiano brings to his football program. Tough, hard-nosed football player. Doesn't matter whatever he's told to do, he's going to make a result. I have to tip my hat off to the way this guy's played football. Yeah, they, they, their motto is to keep chopping, and he's the guy who's always chopping. He, he is always chopping. It's the kind of guy who I think rubs off on other players, I, I believe, just the effort he gives in all phases of the game. Yeah, we're talking about playing inspired special teams, but when you have a football player who's playing inspired football, the guy next to him, you know, this is still competition. The guy next to him is getting great as well. He's going to say, hey, I'm not going to let this guy out play. I'm not going to let this guy outwork me on Saturday afternoon. So he inspires everyone around him to play well. Like I said, a Greg Schiano type of football player uh, hats off to this and, and you know where that happens in film study? And when guys are sitting down and watching and watching film and watching tape, they're going to watch what happens in the game, and they're going to hear the coaches praise Joel Lefebvre for his hustle away from his away from the ball. They're going to realize that he always seems to be around when something big is happening. That that's an unconventional play. That's the kind of time. That's the time when other players are going to look around and say, you know, he gets he gets the coach's attention when he does those kinds of things. I'm going to start doing those kinds of things too. You know who got our attention last night? B.J. Daniels. What a game it was for him. When we come back here on the Big East Post Game Show, we will show you what Daniels pulled off and how good he looked and what it does for South Florida. Plus, it is a growing concern all across the country. Concussions in football. Our two experts, Roman and Don, will give us their thoughts on hits and how to prevent concussions. It's all coming up when we come back on the Big East Post Game Show. Pitt beat Rutgers 41-20.